Good evening, Model Railroaders. Hey. Welcome to the second section podcast, where it's just a bunch of regular guys talking about model railroading. I'm your host, Andy Dorsch. Joined with me is Mike Ostertag. How you doing, Mike? Great. How you doing? Hey, I am doing real good tonight, and we have a guest in the studio this evening. Boomer Dioramas is here. Welcome, Boomer. Who welcome is back. Thanks Who for having me on the show there, you guys. <laughs> yeah, welcome welcome back to the show. How you been? <clears throat> oh, good, good, yeah. Yeah, Are yeah, you, real good, yeah. <laughs> you've, you've been staying busy, I see, oh, yeah, in, yeah. in the modeling world. Having fun, yeah. Having yeah, fun. Sure. Yeah. Got to have fun. That's outstanding. So I know most, if not everyone here this evening uh, in the live stream knows who you are. Um, you have a, a pretty awesome YouTube channel out there where you're you're sharing your modeling tips and um, exploits. Why don't you give yourself just a, a little introduction to the audience that, that doesn't uh, know who you are for, for all of our fans out there tonight? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, put you right you on the spot. We'll put you on the spot. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like what story do you want? Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I've been into the hobby. Like, I mean, I started out with, you know, like a model airplane. The first model I built was an A, uh, AT or uh, a Texan AT6 or Harvard, they call it in Canada. Right. Okay. Uh, you know, when I was nine or 10 or something like that. And, and that was it. I got the bug, you know, to build models. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think I shared the story of uh, the train thing with my brother and I and stuff when we went into the neighbors <laughs> snooping around his basement, right? There was an open window on a warm summer day. We, he got caught. Well, we both got caught and I got away. <laughs> but I had a big Lionel train. It was just awesome, right? And it really yeah. left an impression on us. So, And then I just got into uh, like trains was always something that I liked, but I wasn't preconditioned by the model railroad, though. Like, uh, yeah. I was more into like like aircraft and tank and you know, armor and then dioramas and stuff like that. So when I got into model railroading, I already had that sort of diorama concept embedded in, you know, the smaller scene. Yeah, right. And so, yeah, so I just infused it into the model railroad. Like that's just the way I sort of took it in. Like I didn't really start with a model railroad magazine and then just kind of follow along that kind of trend. I just um, was more on a smaller scale building, you know, little dioramas, like railroad dioramas. And then, of course, around that time in the 70s, people were starting to do that, you know, like yeah. the, the little sectional shelf layouts. And it suited me because I never had a lot of space, especially after I cut holes in the closet downstairs. <laughs> in the house. My dad came down. What are you doing? Right. You cut a hole in the wall, right, to run. <laughs> run trains through? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> The loop around, you know, it's right into the closet, right? You know, to come around again. But yeah. anyway, you know, I quickly realized that I had to settle for a small, you know, six or eight foot by two foot layout. And I've sort of, I mean, I've built a few large ones over the years, but I've always gravitated to the smaller layout. Like Glover Road was when I re-entered in after a uh, decade hiatus, and it just felt so right and so cool again, you know. Yeah, so. David Winter says his dad would have killed him. If uh, if you would have went and cut holes in there, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, and then shooting paint, you know, like humbral paint and testers, like in a yeah. little room with a little window open, like in the airbrush. When I got my first Pache airbrush, like I didn't really know what I was doing, right? So my dad, he, he came down there one time and he said, "Son, you better you better open up a few more windows, right? You're going to asphyxiate, you know." Yeah. I was shooting earth tones and everything all over my scenery because I couldn't stand the look of the opaque toy-like thing. It bugged sure. me right away. Like yeah. right away when I was a younger kid, I like there was something about, you know, I think we used lichen then, you know, you know that stuff? Yeah, like the most. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 right? And then uh, I quickly started bringing dirt in, you know, from outside, yeah. sifting dirt and everything. I thought, wow, this looks realistic, you know. And so I was always looking for sticks and dirt, you know, <laughs> I had bags. You know, as a kid, I'd have my pockets full of little Ziploc baggies or whatever with yeah. samples of dirt and stuff. Yeah, just uh, oh. always something that I did. And, and, of course, it translated into the, you know, the model railroad, but but on a more of a smaller scale. Like, you know, yeah. like River Road is a real, you know, I jump ahead 50 years, but it's really the one I've been waiting to do for a long time. 
you know, yeah. like take a prototype, I mean, and, and try to jump off from that, you know, from a prototypical scene and then just sure. expand from that. So you're, so you're really, you're really diving in, in, into the, the proto, the prototypical uh, elements and what, what railroad are you modeling for those who don't know? So it's the SRY. So like, on the home page like if you go to about right yeah like on the page for later if people want to go there like it like there's just a little write-up on it right it's the uh sry is an acronym for southern british columbia rail which was formerly bc hydro rail in the 60s and 70s like after the bc electric and it ran down it ran sort of shoulder to shoulder with cp actually i think cp like they leased some of cp trackage as well but was BC Hydro. They had this yellow livery and stuff. And uh, yeah, uh, if you go to about, oh, cool. Yeah. Um, to the far right there up above. Yeah, right there. And you'll see there. Yeah. So yeah. Southern uh, uh, SRY short line in Southern British Columbia Rail. So it was BC Hydro. And then it went into receivership for a while. It was called Southern British Columbia Rail. And then a fellow bought it. Um, Dennis Washington or Washington Court bought it, you know, several decades back and uh, just called it SRY, right? Rail Link. Yeah. Now they have a new, my locomotives are more uh, like the older livery from like 2000, like to 2012 like okay. in, the, in the late 90s. And then they started changing to the meatball logo, like Washington Red. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they call it the meatball, I love the, right? They call it the meatball. Yeah, but I that's, that's one of the best names yeah. for a logo I've ever heard. Yeah, I like the lion head, the Washington Corp, you know, lion head. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. But anyway, uh, he owns C SPAN too, which connects to SRY as well. That's a part of the scene, like the barge slip, like okay. which used to be C SPAN, but actually he owns all that now, so he has the connector to Vancouver Island and all the coastal communities up the west coast of BC and the short line through the lower Fraser Valley in southern British Columbia. So he's got quite a nice operation going there. Yeah. So so just to kind of go back to the about about your layout, you're so you're you're in a is it a it's just a, a room size layout. Yeah. Correct? So it's a 12 by about a 12 by 11 bedroom. Right. And, yeah. uh, you know, with a lot a bit of politics and uh you know, you know, like a notarized, you know, letter, right? Okay, yeah. sign here, honey. Right? Yeah. Like this, that was the deal. Is... Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like during Glover Road, like I had it against one wall, and you know, right? Just you don't need that much space, just ten feet, kind of thing. And then, but I had plans to do S or Y, but I, more I started seeing the other walls, and I thought, okay, so I'm a finished carpenter too, right? Like from, sure. past, from my past trade and stuff, and so I visualized the scene, you know, the whole bench work i thought okay how am i going to get this past you know my wife and uh that's another story but i did get her to sign <laughs> off on it and she forgot and i showed it <laughs> hey, <remember this? laughs> right but uh, she's pretty happy with it though because it fits the room it's kind of like you know the way i framed it with I mean, a clean it, fascia you know it, it's it's it more like furniture the, yeah yeah it's more acceptable to the family like if you want to sell it you know just to tell everybody like if you want to sell your layout you know to the family or the wife, like right. try to present it, like build a maquette model, like a miniature one inch to the foot, like of the framework, like out of balsa like that's what I did. Like I actually built a one inch to the foot maquette model of the whole layout and the balance and everything. And I showed it to her. I said, this is going to yeah. go in the room. She says, oh, really? You know, and this would be painted nice and let it down, right. And uh, yeah, so here I am, you know, I'm halfway yeah. into it now. And so it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, so that's the first tip of the night. I mean, I mean, if 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 you really want to sell it, right, and you you want to use a room, yeah. for, I mean, first of all, get it in writing so that when when it comes back, you, you got you got yeah. the you got the documentation yeah. to fall back on. But you know, make it look nice, look at like furniture. That's that's a good tip. But at what, was at what cost though? What what did it cost you to get her to sign <laughs> well, off okay, on okay, it? Okay, See? so so. <laughs> I'm sure it so, wasn't uh, free. Yeah. So the <laughs> overhead balance, right? Because it's in a kind of a theater style shadow box, you know, like yeah. sort of right. Yep. Like you've like I pointed that out in the last video, the cottonwood blind to show a little bit of that. But like up above, like it's eleven foot ceiling. So I 
I uh, built in like suspended valance, right? Like a framework, which is two and a half or two inch three quarter ply frames, just simple frames with eye bolts. And then it goes up into the like studs, like up in the wall. And then it's pressure fit in the room. So the corners mm. are coved, right? The corners are curved. So yeah. it ties it all together. Like it, like a, uh, it just makes everything more solid when you add a curved corner into your bench work when it's lightweight. It just, the strength is just off the charts, like rigid, strong. And yeah. so like, it doesn't move. So I said, okay, you can have all the shelf space up top, except for this one seven foot section. So she puts all her stuff up there and sure. And uh, it's out of view, right? You don't see it, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh and yeah, then... you got to work it, right? You got to, you know, work the politics on those things. That's that's the big hurdle, I think, for a lot of people. But the beauty of doing it in a climate-controlled room, as you probably know, Andy and Mike, like you both have layouts on the go in climate control, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, it's heated, right? Right. It's room right. temperature. And it's so nice just to go in there and the bench is underneath and I just like I can close the door and leave it for a week. Like if I want to, mm. you know, if I'm busy at work or, you know, just want a break and then I go in and it's all there waiting and it's just very convenient and nice, you know, so. Yeah. That's really cool. It feels peachy. Yeah, it feels. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. I'm happy with it. Yeah, excellent. So I'll just uh, toot your horn here a little bit. So you have a, a pretty substantial YouTube channel. We brought that up earlier. Um, how many videos do you have out there? Hundreds, right? Yeah. Okay. So right on the the uh, page, like YouTube's always changing things, but I noticed they just put a little like under Boomer Diorama Road that it tells you right there at Boomer Dioramas. And it tells you 455 videos. Wow. Wow. So over like 400, at least over 400 of those is it covers Glover Road, the first yep. little eight foot uh, layout, and then River Road from the very beginning, like everything, yeah. the bench work. Like I've covered just about what well, you know, Andy, like yeah. just about everything. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it doesn't have enough videos. So yeah, you, yeah, you don't nearly. I'm working have on it, right? Yeah, I'm working on the magic one thousand. You know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's and that's fantastic. So, and and you've you've been doing this for uh, the the videos bit started, um, how how long ago? A couple years. So yeah, so the like initially the channel it it was just a a uh, Google account, right? Because Google owns YouTube, and then it's so easy to set up a YouTube channel. But when right. I first did it, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about the YouTube culture. I just saw it as a way to upload videos of the cat or the dog or the fish, you know, or whatever, yeah, right? right? <laughs> yeah, the yeah, cat video. Silly thing with your phone, you know? Like a guy caught a, a sturgeon down the road. I filmed it, put, loaded it up. Like if you go way back under videos, you can scroll like infinium, right? Backwards. Yep. Like if you go to yeah. videos, you just roll it, right? That's the nice thing about YouTube is they don't archive it or hide it. It's all there to see, like indefinitely. Yeah, right. right? Unless you unless you totally pull it down, but yeah, but then there's playlists too, right? Like I've been building up the playlist. If you go to there, it's compiled like each section. Yeah. Like on the page. A lot of people don't know how to navigate YouTube. It's it's easy once you know, but they don't realize it. Like they'll get a video and they have no idea there's a channel with four hundred videos like that covers. Yeah, I'll just like, you know yeah i'll bring I'll, the producer will get his act together here um and and we'll bring her back up um just to to show you so you know he's he's got you know all the videos here and you go to the home screen right yeah you have popular and you have all these different playlists yeah there's the playlist yeah so the and there's like see there's 18 in one seven 13 and then if you hit that arrow mike on the or andy on the right there's more right See wow. that one there? Like where you see there to the left with the sun shining through the trees, there's 10. That's the building of it. Like that's the construction of it, which is really interesting, if anyone's yeah. wondering. And that, yeah, um, that was during that heat wave, that horrible heat wave yeah. we had. It was 40 plus C. It was unbelievable. And then you can, if you look over to the right here, you can see the different videos yeah. within there. That's pretty cool too. Yeah, it is. YouTube's are pretty, like they keep evolving it it's a pretty i would say it's the best platform like there is like when it comes to video so yeah for sure like nobody can match them that way they just don't have the uh interconnectivity like facebook does though like you know what i mean like yes yeah. yeah it's 
it's not quite like that or Instagram or anything, right? It has its own <laughs> style, but for video, it rules, right? Yeah, and I, I, I mean, it's content. especially, especially in a hobby like ours where it's, it's primarily, you know, it's a visual thing, right? Oh, isn't and it great? Eh? It's amazing to share with. Oh, I know. What an awesome, like, uh, you know, like social media for the hobbyists, like the model railroader in this case, like I would have wigged out like when I was 20, like if I had that kind of you yeah. know, information, like I'd be thumbing through, you know, buying used magazines, at the missing cover, reading articles over and over again and trying it out. And, you know, now they have full tutorials on every aspect of model building and you know, I mean, you name it, it's out there, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know? It's it, it's all been done, and now it's out there. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah. So it's a, so that's a. I think that's a fantastic uh, intro, Mike. I don't know about you. Um, oh, oh yeah. I mean, you could sit there and let him just run the whole show for the whole. I mean, yeah, I, I think we'll just I sit think, back. It's on cruise control now. That's all yeah. there is to it. That's, I mean, that's. that's that's pretty much it. So we did, we did scratch out a, a tentative outline and I'm sure the outline's going to, I guess, devolve from there, but I know we wanted to talk about <laughs> no, that never happens. We hey, wanted man, to, talk... to be spontaneous, that, right? Yeah. That we never happens. Here for the end scale fans too. I was thinking, sorry, uh, I don't want to forget because I know that people, oh, he doesn't like end scale. Actually, no, I do. Like I have end scale <laughs> stuff like here, look at this. Like have you seen these by Cato? Like two beautiful bud cars, right? Wow. Those uh, are actually these are hard sharp. to find now, I think. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to repaint these to BC Rail eventually. And uh, when I build the Chikimis River Bridge diorama, but that's a project down the road. But there there you are for you end scalers. See that? Like... <laughs> He's a multi scaler. Maybe on, next on top year. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so we were, we're chatting here and. Um, you know, it's just, it, like I said, the, we, we're going to talk about a, a couple of concepts this evening, and then we're going to have a short line of the show, um, yeah. as well. Mike's got a, another That's one, cool. another one yeah. queued up, uh, very similar to the SRY, but really know, similar, very similar to the SRY. Really so we're gonna, very delivery, similar. right? <laughs> yeah. The livery, oh the, the paint scheme God. is wild. <laughs> <laughs> the we were sneaking me last night. Eh? The paint we were, we're, scheme's <laughs> not for the faint of heart, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> Just for the listeners, if they don't know, we were uh, doing a bit of rehearsal last night, trying to get all the connectivity, because I know the last time it wasn't very good. So yeah. I got an Ethernet cable and sorted all that. I said, that, <laughs> we're not going to let that happen again, right? So we got a good connect now, right? Yeah. And Mike's got new lighting. Look at that. Look at Mike. He's, yeah, no, I got a glow no, the halo. I have a shiny forehead now. I got to come the, up with something here. It's the production better. value. The production value is really starting to to, to climb to here up. on the old yeah, second I'm gonna have section. To, I'm going to have to spend a couple hours in makeup before I go go on the show next yeah. time. <laughs> we could all probably use that with go, the HD cameras, right? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll go upstairs and see if Joy has some like cover up or something like that to put on there. Yeah, yeah. Dab here. Wear a hat, like like. Uh, was it a uh, shadow? Wolf yeah, wear a hat. <laughs> wear a hat. Yeah, oh, there right. you go. Easy peasy. So, I and we so we got we have over 145, uh, almost 150 people um, out in in the chat tonight. Um, so as we go through the topics this evening, um, if you have questions for the for for Boomer, um, you know, put them out in the chat tonight, and we'll get them up there um, and and get them answered as as best that we can. Um, we do have some moderators out in the chat. They're the folks with the little blue wrenches next to their name. So just uh, remember, they're out there helping things uh, stay civil in the chat. So keep her, keep her clean and keep her model railroad related, if at all possible. We don't want to have to chuck you out of this great show tonight. So um, it's uh, yeah, and wigwag. Yeah, pretty soon you're going to have to to charge admission to the show. Uh, yeah, well, you know, we we don't pay the host very much, so you know. We're good there. So that's this. Yeah. So I think uh, I think what we'll do is we'll do uh, one of the topics that that Boomer wanted to talk about this evening, um, and then we'll we'll break into short line of the show after that, and then we'll finish up with the the rest of of the of the of the scale so, or of the of the of the script, and then obviously questions and and all that good stuff. So. Um, 
Holy cow, we got just here. Uh, hey guys, watching from the boat in Taiwan, Gary Gold. Oh, there's Gary. Hey, Gary. Whoa, man, hey, doing, Gary. Go yeah, ahead. Hey, so, Gary, okay, so I got to tell you so, uh, Gary, just, just quick to listeners, he's like, I I believe, he correct me if I'm wrong, he's sailing around the world. Like, what? Yeah, what? Oh, yeah, like a few weeks ago, he was in Japan or off Okinawa or somewhere. I can't remember. And he and he uh, sent me a message or whatever, and and he was tied up somewhere off of South Japan or something. Anyway, he models on his boat. He's got a big yacht, and uh, he's sailing around the world. And uh, wherever he can get Wi-Fi, he you know he he follows the channel and the podcast now. So, wow! Yeah, so he's around the other side of the world. That's fantastic. Wow, well, that's welcome. awesome. Yeah, he lives that's on really the cool. Kolchuk, right? He lives on the water. He's oh, he's a man. sailor. Yeah, he's a sailor. Yeah. That's kind of wow. a cool life. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's really uh, awesome. Well, welcome. You're, you're, you know, I'm glad you can pick us up while out on the boat. That's awesome. So, um, there is a couple of questions filtering in. So, Boomer, we are going to fire them at you real quick here. Okay, sure. Um, so, go via, go home, uh, go via or go home. Says Boomer, you have a lot of talent. What inspires you? Oh my goodness, what a great question, right? You yeah. know what I think. You know what I think about that question. And uh, I was thinking about it the other day, like, you know how people say talent or gift. And, you know, I think, you know, for me, how I did it, it's passion. And I really don't mm. know where it comes from. Like, ever since I was a kid, I had a passion for miniatures. Like, mm. I just, it was just something that I picked up uh, at a very young age. And it just never waned, you know. And then I got into career, like film and, you know, theater and the arts. And that just, you know, flamed the fire. And, you um, just had a real keen, deep, sort of bottomless pit of passion to create and build things in miniature. And yeah. uh, the model railroad is one of the best. I mean, I could have chosen quite a few different mediums. I mean, I was in quite a few different mediums, but I could have settled for probably painting flats or sculpture. But the model railroad offered so much diversity, you know, like, like the actual canvas of the model railroad is incredible. Like all the things that you can do in the broad reach that it has across one big community of people from every walk of life. Right. We talked about that. And yeah. And uh, the passion just keeps coming up, you know, like as long as I don't do commissions, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll kill it. Right. Nothing worse than killing your passion is, is too many commissions. You know, right? Yeah. Right. That'll, but, that'll, um, that'll end it quick. <laughs> but um I've worked hard at it. Like I've taken every opportunity and, uh, you know, I put a lot of brawn into it, mm -hmm. like, like, like really work. And I still have that kind of attitude, like whatever I build, like it might be a model kit. Like I pumped off a couple model kits the last couple of weeks. One yeah. I shared one, I just threw on the, you know, like on the shelf, I just said, okay, I'm going to build this kit and I'm not going to paint this one. I'm just going to throw it together nip it off. I'm not going to do anything fancy. Okay. Put that aside. And then I'm going to do this one. I'm just going to paint it rough and have fun with it. I'll tape it and throw it out there, but not be OCD, you know, like just, and I learned some stuff from it, right? I learned some color mixes from doing it, but I mm. didn't know, you know, yeah. So, you so, know, I just like, I practice it, right? Yeah. So this, there's a, I guess a, another one that's kind of coming up here. It says uh boomer, having uh, been a part of your channel and binge watched all your videos, uh, what is the, the one thing or two that you would recommend to novices, especially those that aren't artistic? Um, just kind of building on the end of what you were, what you were saying there. Okay. So this is going to sound strange. Okay. Find a biography of an artist, like whether it's Rothko or uh, Van Gogh or whatever, and read it, read about their life. Like, like read what they think. Like there, it's so powerful. Like that really, really propelled me. Like uh, when I was in my 20s, somebody like a mentor recommended me to read some of the great artists. Like, you know, there's a lot of different writers, but just like, like Mark Rothko, for example, like he was the guy in New York, you know, he painted gray. Like the name of his paint, you know, he just painted gray. Yeah. Like shades of gray that blew people away. Like someone would look at that and go, oh, anybody can do that. No, you can't. Right. You'll end up with mud like he was yep. there, like, like just study some artist. Right. And read a biography and read their life. Their, their life is fascinating. And then you begin to resonate with how they think. And uh, you might find yourself that, wow, maybe I have a stigma here. Like maybe 
you know, like maybe I am artistic and I don't realize it. Right. Yeah. And uh, part of it, too, is just accepting that you have a creative spark, too. Right. Especially if you already want to build a model railroad, you got to have some creative spark. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and did you have a formal art background or uh, Derek Alexander was asking that? Um, prior to to getting into the the model building or was it just something that not training those school like my education yeah. was not uh in the visual arts it was it was it was all self-taught and then hang and then meeting artists and hanging out with them and practicing yeah. it practicing it and doing it on my own and you know i used to paint canvas and yeah, i wasn't that great at that really but sculpture i really could see things in 3d like yeah. I, have a, I just found a I don't know. I can't explain. Like I can just rotate things. Like I can look at something and rotate it and see all the angles. Yeah. Like, like here, and then I can sketch it and build it. And see, like it's weird. I don't know. Maybe that's part of the in the DNA. I I'm not sure. But you know, it's funny how people say, "Well, you know, I can't draw a stick man." Like, or you know, I can't draw. Like I can't draw that good either, right? Like I sketch. Sure. Like if I see a building like a warehouse, like I'll draw a rectangle and then I'll just put squares, door, window, and I'll write notes and then take pictures of it and then go home and then interpret that into a model. Like, and it's not even exactly like it. Like the brewery's not like, we'll probably look at some of those photos, right? Yeah. I have them queued Later. up. So whenever, whenever you yeah. want to bring them up, I can bring them up. Yeah. Like the brewery was, uh, I mean, it's up to you, like Andy, like uh, how you want to slot it in, but uh, the brewery is a really good discussion point because it, it, Here, it let's bring it up yeah okay if the producer can figure out how to run the show here well this is gonna well, yeah be like inspiration too right like it helps to go to a railroad like find any right of way somewhere that like drive somewhere or ride your bike or whatever and find a section that has character okay so you see how yeah that's a good shot there like you see where the uh extractor is there yeah on the on the left here the yeah yeah like down the left corner like a lot of people don't realize that that's a road through there that's a like like a like the actual real prototype road is paved right there but i didn't pave it i wanted it to look different a little bit different but you can see the posts the yellow yeah. posts so yeah so the truck would back in there like a tanker truck backs a trailer and out of the view, like at the end of the layout where the door to the room is, that's the imaginary part. But there's a parking lot there where wow. trucks, yeah, trucks turn around and they back in there and they siphon off that extractor. All the, uh, I'm not sure what it is, to be honest. It's some kind of acid or just malt or something. Hmm. And then, um, of course, there was a spurt, like a turnout right there where that derail is, but I couldn't fit it, right? And it ran down along the, warehouse there but i couldn't fit it because i wouldn't have been able to fit the barge slip in like i only had that much space to come out into the room right. and like one inch of depth is really really precious yeah i see that oh, oh yeah, yeah. When you're planning a shelf layout man like i went over you wouldn't believe the amount of time i spent like taking the mock-ups the flat like i took an inch out of the depth of the yeah. brewery like it's on a bit of a slice of a pie angle. You can see it there, yeah, you right? Can see that in the upper upper yeah. left hand part of the the. So how what it it's not it's not perpendicular to the to to your wall or to your backdrop. No, it's not, and that's one of the tricks for perspective. Ah. For yeah, for you know, for creating the illusion. Like notice mm. where the uh, just behind the extractor there. That's about half an inch there. Right here. Yeah. And then yeah. at the end, it goes down like three feet, I think, or yep. 40, 40 inches. By the time I get down to the end down there, it's almost three inches. Wow. So, so this 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 flat is um, it's over three feet long? Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Like the actual warehouse, the prototype was a little bit longer than that. But I had to oh. compress the, the uh, tilt-up concrete panels a bit because I wanted to get – the three warehouses down to Axton Steel and the middle one, which is an artist studio now, um, got crushed. Like I had a poor thing, <laughs> like, like I crushed it, you know. Um, but yeah, the, like like that brewery, like in reality, like like look at where the barge slip is, like the butt in there, right? Yep. So if you go from there to the left, like the brewery wouldn't be right there. 
like the end of the brewery would be close to there but a little bit further back so i pushed the whole brewery down to enrich in the 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 you know the scene here yeah you know what i mean to compress yeah. it and make yeah. it more dense because really otherwise cool. i would have needed 20 feet right yeah to do the prototype footprint i would have needed another 10 feet unbelievable like an ho scale and then when you look at the barge like you see the big bend the curve like where the cars are way down there like yep so so i was pulling the barge like you see where the the pile is on the outside of the fascia edge so there's one inch there right yep so i was pretty hung up on there has to be one inch clearance on it's anathema for me to have anything touch the edge there's just no way right like, yeah like there's no way i was going to allow that artistically like it had to be inside the border there there had to be a feeling when you look at it the water goes around it like i didn't like and so i thought darn i need an inch though i need another inch i want to pull the barge out more i want to move the track more and then put the uh you know the the spur along the brewery you know I, like another two inches, but it's too late, right? Yeah, you know? <laughs> it was too late. I was, I'm not going to rebuild the bench work just for that. So, <laughs> and uh, even if I did put the turnout in and build it exactly like the prototype in terms of the footprint, I would have needed off view like five feet for a lead to service the brewery. I'm really, yeah. So, so, Boomer, is this kind of one of those things where and we've talked about our, our our, our friend Shane Mason has brought this up to us before the crop versus compress like scenario. So like by doing this, is this more of a compression scenario or is this okay, more like so, a crop or is this more cropping the scenario? Okay. So I took like the prototype I showed in the pr previous videos, like, like I showed with a yellow marker, like that was the, you know, the area, the footprint that I wanted to model. And I, and I realized I only had 10 feet. Right. And I also had yeah. to make the turn too. Like mm. down at the other end, I had to make the turn, and there's no way I was going to put a 20 inch curve in there. No, 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 no way. It had to be 50 to 60 inches for me. I want a prototypical curve, even if it takes me 20 feet, because that is what makes it feel like the railroad to me. Like I don't need like more tangent to feel railroady. Yeah. It feels railroady when the <laughs> when the curve, like when you look at that curve from any angle it feels like the pro like it looks like the prototype even though you know like it takes up that amount of space like that visually wow. it just like it transformed the layout like it makes it's only 10 <laughs> feet, right like it's yeah. only, well actually the full length is only about 14 feet but it looks way bigger right and it's partly yeah. due to the which we'll talk about too the broad curve uh what i yeah. call big bend and when i was trying to get that curve so that's where i put the turnouts I had to build the interchange like the there's an interchange there and a and a uh, classification spur. So I had to fit that in. So I had to build my my turnos as one sort of uh, plate and shift it back and forth to get it to suit up to the barge slip approach. Right. Oh, my gosh. So it looked prototypical because I didn't really compress the barge slip like a little bit. I did, but not by much because that was the main feature. So then I was like, oh, I don't want to go against the wall, like the like section no. two. I, like I don't want to crush against the wall. I want a background there to create depth. So I was moving the whole track plan, like dry running for like like a month, right? Yeah. Trying to get the geometry right, and then and then once I got the geometry right, then because it was all three H plywood, like the whole like the whole layout is built on uh uh one and three quarter inch ripped three quarter inch birch plywood very very small profile but super strong right okay yeah. and it's skinned with uh, like it's elevated because the river's lower but it's elevated with baltic birch seven ply like like plywood like top grade plywood it's stiff and light and and then i had to cookie cutter like once all the track was you know sort of in place then I traced around, I, I cut away hmm. just, you know, like away from the right away where the river went down. And then I wanted, wanted to make it look like there was undulations, which is 
ch a challenge on a shelf layout, right? You don't want to make yeah. it look like a big flat pancake. So I cut away the foreground, right? And yeah. then stuck, you know, I used foam to build up that. But yeah, it was a real, real challenge. Like I really, like I just love building that section one. Like I want to cycle back to it. Actually, I'm going to because I have to finish the barge slip and then I want to build the ferry and the tug. And so I'm a little bit torn right now whether I'm going to move past the, you know, the old growth end, like where the parking lot is, you know, the yeah. last one. So I'm sort of stalled right there, which is okay because I haven't done anything past that. But now I'm uh, sort of torn uh, right now. Should I start developing that scene, the parking lot where the overpass is? Like I got the yep. overpass pushed out of the way. Yep. Or should I go back to section one and, and like this summer and uh, build the ferry? Like the, you know, that comes in the front part, right? That's going to be really integral to the staging, which is another thing I wanted to mention too, is this question, is staging essential? Hmm. Because that's a big question for the shelf layout. Like, where's all your traffic going? Where's yeah. it coming from, right? So I'm thinking of doing the ferry because that would be like imaginary <laughs> bridge traffic coming in onto the layout. And then the the the, uh, the tug. Because I want to get back into model building this year. I've been doing a lot of scenery the last year. And I want to get more technical again, kind of like yep. the diner the diner thing. Oh, the diner. Uh, but the I, diner. I, yeah. <laughs> Diner, yeah, I know. I, I think that, I upset a lot of people on that one. Eh? It was like I love, I love that build, with but, it, right? Yeah, <laughs> I'm the I'm back a, alley. It, it was, <laughs> it was for me. It was the fact that how did you come up with the imagination of like reimagined what that would have looked like? Because you never see what the back half of that building looks like in the painting. You never see it. So that's all imagineered. Right. That's yeah, well, all it's art, right? Like I caught right. like I was inspired by Edward Hopper's, you know, Nighthawks, right? Yeah. And so I've never been to New York, although I'd love to go there. It's on my bucket list. But that like Edward Hopper grew up in New York and he walked around at night a lot and he saw things <laughs> and and he and like he told me he cheated that, you know, that diner anyway. And then I thought, okay, so I'll take what I can see in his painting. And then I'll take what I see here in New Westminster near the SRY Railroad that goes right by there, where down by the waterfront, they have back alleys like that. And I'll merge the two together. Like I'll do the diner that nobody knows what it looks like. Right. Yeah. yeah the cheese thief. Yeah, I know. The kid, the kid, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, the kid. Yeah, I know. That harkens back to when we were kids, you know, like, yeah. you know, you we look at what Otter Creek and. Look at our creek kids, stuff. okay? <laughs> I'll just yeah. tell you that. The toilet. Remember so what like, I told you last night? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the toilet, the yeah. toilet. But yeah, no, the cheese uh, thief has a story behind it. Like there was the Nom Cafe in Kitsilano where I grew up. Like like there was a, like down on 4th Avenue, it was Hippieville, right? Like in the 60s and 70s. And everybody left their doors open and, you know, grew funny stuff in their backyard. And, you know, like yeah. you get it, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, beer bottles were all piled out back. We'd collect them and cash in on them. And and the restaurants, like we knew knew the people that had the local restaurants. So every once in a while, you know, on the way home, I'd you know drop by and pick up a little slice of cheese from the back of the you know restaurant from the guy. You know. <laughs> so there's <laughs> anyway. Oh man, the cheese. Yeah, my brother's watching this. He's probably laughing, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my mom would say, "Where'd this cheese come from?" Right? I said, "Make macaroni, mom." You know. Yeah, but um, yeah. So the diner was really sort of inspired by Edward Hopper because he's my favorite artist. Like, you know, from that period, like 20th century, you know, artists in the 30s, and and uh, I took what I felt as an artist, and then I just merged them together into a miniature, yeah. like the diner. So when you see the corner of it peaking on the video, that's 30s, obviously. Like, what's that doing on the layout? Well, it could be. Like, it could, because we have a diner down the street that's got Elvis, and it's way back dated, right? Like, when you go in, it feels like you're back, like, in the 50s, like the Elvis time in Marilyn Monroe. So it could be that. And then on the back side, which you don't really see, like, I almost want to turn that side out because it's really interesting. Yeah. But, uh, you know, yeah, it was a fun piece and it was a good, uh, you know, I, like I learned a lot from it. So I, I got, there's a couple of questions that, that we may have uh, missed on the way back. 
Um, just Brooks Moses said, so what radius did you end up with on Big Bend anyway? Okay, so that's uh, so I used Fast Tracks, uh, hashtag no sponsor, uh, fast <laughs> hashtag <tracks>. not sponsored <laughs> for free. I know they have the paper track. templates, so you can buy all their stuff, but uh, they also have paper templates, very gracious of them, that you can print and cut out and lay your whole track plan out physically with paper templates yeah and then move them around yeah so and say oh okay this 55 inch radius won't work i need a 60 and it just got like that i just started playing around with number 10s and eights and i had you know <laughs> like 40 you know turnout paper templates and just messing around till till they all worked and yeah. then i marked them all and then i just put them in there and it it came out at like 60 inches or something like unbelievable wow. yeah wow and so, so you know well, i put the curve in the corner like you know how the yeah. section there's this curve there right where the you know where the river kind of ends and then there's the the culvert and everything well when i put the curve on the front to accommodate that because i don't want it running right on the edge of the layout that's also anathema to me hmm. i don't want track like one time my locomotive took a dive many years ago one of my brass locomotives and that was it never going to happen again if the, if the locomotive gets tipped or your arm pulls and it goes down on the floor because you're running your track by your lip it only needs to happen once and you'll never do that again right <laughs> right but anyway so when i built the corner out like i purchased about 10 inches right yeah from the corner to the apex of the curve and it deepened the whole scene to almost three feet but there's not wow. much back there to get to, but it made the whole scene work because of the curved fascia. Mm. Like, it, like it just worked. I thought, wow, this like this looks like it fits. It works, right? Yeah. And it still doesn't take up a huge amount of space. But and then because the turnouts are in that area, I have the interchange. I like I can switch. There's a run around in there. There's two actually that overlap that are actually part of the prototype, like but further down. But I had to bring that in to the scene to kind of uh, add some options for operations and so on. Just tighten yeah. up a bit to the barge slope. So, so did Bill Bill Kenkel asks. Uh, so, do, do you just do you have a, a track plan or diagram? Yeah, there um, is. Or... Uh, you can see it on some of the videos. It's 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 pinned up. It's just okay. quite simple. Yeah. But you developed uh... it kind of on the fly, though, right? I mean, or did you have an a uh, uh, basically a, a route in mind? And well, then I just... took the section one prototypical footprint, like yeah. by the barge slip, and and the run all the way down, which if I built it in scale would have eaten up my 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 uh, whole layout, right? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, right. Like, like how much, like an HO scale, can you fit one mile and twenty six feet, like linear feet? Not like not even, right? No. So. I took basically section one and I wanted that that lead to the brewery, the barge slip, and then the interchange with the track and the runaround. That's all there, but it's further, like it's further down the line, like down the river a ways. It's it's stretched out, right? So I compressed it into the footprint so that I could have options to run around and switch and just to tighten things up. Otherwise, you just end up with two tracks running to nowhere, you know. So then I just sketched it up and just chicken scratch, right? Yeah, right. You know, just... like, and then just templates. I like hands-on, like visual. Mm -hmm. like some people like to design and software, and that's great. You know, like if that's what floats your boat and that's how you think it through. But I'm more like I cut out the stuff and I lay it down physically. And I, mm. you know, boxes and blocks and, you know, and uh, that's... So the so you know, then do you I, do like a do you do like a basic square type bench work then and then yeah first yes yeah, just yeah it's just, just like three, square shelves and then go three okay. rectangles both yeah together. and then you add to it like the like the bulbous portion where the where the dock is or the 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 uh you mean the curves you know, the, like, like the, the fascia yeah like on the fascia where the where the where the barge slip is like that obviously okay, that's isn't... really easy to do right yeah that is way easier than you really like it looks sophisticated but it's not and i'll and i'll tell you how i did that it's very simple i learned this in the film industry so picture three 
rectangles bolted to the wall, one on one wall, you shove the other one in and you shove the other one in. So you have this three shelves, right? Right. Yeah. Deep. You have three shelves, like you have one big U shaped shelf, two feet deep going hmm. down three walls. So then you take a piece of uh, like anything like thin board, like, like Masonite. I used red Oak, like one eighth red Oak and cut like a, uh, if your fascia is four inches, like high, yeah, right? yeah. If it's four inches, cut like rip a four inch strips on a table saw, right? And take yep. one strip and just tack it onto the one rectangle and push it, like slide it onto the other side, like 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 bend it into the corner, like just yep. grab it, right? You know, like this, and then. Yep push it into the corner and leave a curve there and then tack it on both shelves and then leave the curve there, hang in there and then just frame it in with just block it in with wood. Right. Yep. And then yeah. add another oh. skin. Right. And then once you get it blocked out, like you can take any layout and do that easy. You can just wrap the whole outside of the layout with long eight foot strips. Just yep. eyeball it in, like just eyeball the curve in. You don't need to measure. You don't need protractors and all that stuff. Just yeah. eyeball it all in till you like the curve. Tack it in place and then block it out with just blocks of wood, right? That's what yeah, we did right? here. Exactly. Yeah. You just push that into the corner and it creates its own curve, right? Right. Yep. That's all I did. This is yeah. one eighth inch masonite. Right, Andy? And I didn't even measure it. That was the beauty of yeah. it. Like I didn't. I'm just like, ah, and it, it looks just looks great good. Too, yeah, right? it just looks good right there. So, And if you want to widen it, like uh, before you tack it, like if you wanted to make that wider, then you just pull one side down, like you tack, like tack one end, and then just pull it, pull it out, and the apex comes out more. And then you tack it, and then you just pack it in. You can pack it in with foam and yep. glue it, glue foam back there. You can do wood, and then run one more. Then I think I ran three strips. At least two, like I glued and then pinned, like you know, with a brad nailer. Yeah. Just glued each one, and so it's super thin. It's a quarter inch thick, and it's like bulletproof. Yeah. Because it's oak, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's not going it's anywhere. For that, yeah. And the framing is so light, so the whole layout, like I can climb right on top of it. it doesn't even move. And I have a couple of braces, like cantilevered braces in strategic spots. So it's very sure. lightweight, very strong, built to last. And uh, also designed to come apart too, as as you know. But yeah, so we've we've touched a bit on the on the track planning, and um, and there's a there's a few people in in the chat kind of asking about curves and easements. And um, okay, yeah, I I think I think maybe this was one really of the good top question. Yeah, this, so this is one of the topics that we've we wanted to discuss tonight. Um, I know we're kind of going off script just a hair. Uh, but that never happens. That never happens. So I think you you wanted to <laughs> talk about <laughs> yeah, you, you wanted to talk about big curves, right? And yeah. and and the and how it I guess relates to the to the shelf layout and, and the importance of it. And uh, so I guess what I'll do is I'll I'll throw up the guitar Stevie Two's comment here. It says, Can you explain how the horizontal easement or, or how your horizontal easement or the transition of curves are um, or just how you do your curves in general on your layout. I mean, I know we touched on it earlier, but if we want to talk about big curves, I could bring up a picture, I think. Um, let's see here. I just use long strips of wood, right? Yeah. Okay. Like battens on a boat. Like, you know what a batten is on a boat when they frame up frames on a on a ship or a boat and they use battens right to true the yeah. uh frames up and to to you know to establish the curve of the plank that like that's how i do it first i lay that on top of the layout i get the one line the main line from one end to the other like where's the main start and where is it going to go and everything else is subject to that okay so i'm going right? to bring up bring up a picture here i okay. think it's one that you shared with me um if i got them here too yeah you got the same ones you have yeah okay yeah that one there yeah that isn't that a beauty that pick it is it's really cool <laughs> so that's 60 inch radius right there yeah that's at least 60 
like those turnouts are from you know fast tracks they're number 10s or 12s i think and they're 60 inch radius like the outside one and the, the one on the inside like the one on the left there like towards yeah. the fascia yeah, like like the very one there with the rail or a derailer, like that's a number eight, I think, just uh, standard turnout because it's just a little siding. But all the rest past that, not that one with the arrow, like that's a standard one too, but all the rest are curved. Hmm. And uh, you can see it's got a crossover there. And uh, so I just took the, uh, so I had a stick running all the way down to the brewery, all the way up to there, like to, like right to the end, to the bottom left corner, right? That I pinned in place. So I said, I want the main. You see the main there? It's the yellow, like where the yellow paint is. Yeah, that's it there. So that goes down to the brewery, right? And it comes right along there. See, that's the main. And then everything else. Beautiful. Yeah, so everything else there was uh, paper templates. They're free from Fast Tracks. If you go to their channel, you can download them and photocopy them and start laying up your plan, right? Like it's beautiful. Yep. And then I started laying the uh, paper templates over top of the bat and like the stick that trying to get the curve roughly. Oh, okay. This turnout's too tight. I'm going to take the next one. Oh, okay. This looks good. And that's how I did it. Yeah. Yeah. Good Lord. I'm happy with number six. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, number six uh, was something that I just wasn't prepared to use. It's like this scene right here really hit the mark like my vision it took me like uh over a year to get to this i think or wow a year and a half but that's what i visualized that big curve when there was nothing there it had to have that hmm. because i could look at that all day long and never get tired of it because that's what the prototype looks like right yeah this is fantastic i mean like the it's like just... that does it for me like that like that big bend like i called it big ben because that's really what it is like yeah. you know to me it was just the name you know how you name name sections of your layout like you know that was so important to me almost more important than the barge slip now you see the barge slip up in the left hand corner it was very important that it had a transition like a nice gentle curve into that you know because i don't want derailments right so right. like when i do operate i want it to be like it as small as the shelf layout is, I want it to, to function as reliably as I can. And the wider your turnouts are, the smoother your trains will run. And also, I mm -hmm. can couple any car on those curves, mm. except for maybe, uh, except for auto rack maybe or something. But I can couple any box car on those curves because at 60 inches, uh, like the couplers line up, right? Yeah. So that, so I can switch and uncouple and do runarounds and uh you know that all works pretty pretty reliably there so that's another method to the or reason for the madness of large broad curves which i wanted to show you um that's in relation to inspiration that book that mike loves <laughs> <laughs> yeah actually, actually it's back here, Mike. Like, yeah, I like see I that. I, I see you got it hid. <laughs> but I have another copy right there. just for you. <laughs> Great. Okay, so, so this is uh, 2006. So when I saw this magazine in 2006, I snapped it up right away. Actually, I bought two copies because it's got an excellent articles on the RS18, six axle CN switches, etc. But when I saw this curve here, like look at that yard. Right? Yeah. Like you see the yeah. curve. And then if you go back to the photo of Big Ben, you'll see what I mean. Like, this is what inspired me. And I never forgot this. I said, I have to have this in the corner. Like, I have to have this look. Now, I didn't build a yard, but I'm thinking of it. Like, because I have more room, right? So now yeah. I'm thinking, okay, hold on here. I got to, you know, I can build the SRY classification yard, at least the throat anyway. <laughs> but see how the curve like that, like that is just like that does it. For me right you know yeah and uh i mean you can load it up with cars like that just have a one locomotive with a car maybe going up the the track there to you know flip a warehouse somewhere you know it's just you know what i mean i love yeah. it right now i just got to get an rs18 
I think Rapido's <laughs> coming up with them. Yeah, <laughs> I promise here. I wouldn't buy any more trains, but if it's an RS-18, I might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, the I'll, big broad curves, yeah. Now, if you remember Love last it. night, Boomer, remember last night I said I was all done with track work? Thanks for wrecking that for me now. <laughs> I mean, it's just, now I'm sitting here thinking, you know. That's my favorite pick right there. Like, that, yeah, that's... You know, like it really is like i like since i put those trees in like the cottonwoods and that cedar snag like you know how i went on a tree i did an upload uh when was that upload i did when i did the tree bender it was called tree bender or something scene fidelity I, anyway i can't remember which one it was but i went on a tree building bender right and i always build trees like i'll probably build another tree a week from now on the side like i have a little bit of a tree farm off view there like on the other thing I always pump a tree out now and again, like I'll start three or four and then out of the three or four, I'll light two of them and I'll put them on a different pallet. And then I just keep doing that practicing trees because you get better at it. Right. Like everybody does. Like my early trees were like on Glover Road, like, how you know where they are? They're stuffed way back there behind the grassy knoll. Right. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. just, you know, I, that's just the way it is. You know, we evolve. Right. Like that's the disease of the model railroad because we all grow in skill. Then we look at our it's old a stuff disease. Go, oh, it's man, a disease. God, it's a disease. That. Right? Yeah. So yep. anyway, so that's a t-shirt right there. That's a t-shirt. If I ever... that's a t-shirt. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Tree model bender. railroading. It's a disease. It's a disease. But um, you can see where the trees are there, like in the apex of the curve there. Yeah. So that's so okay. So that's prototypical, right? But there's no cedar snag there though. They're just cottonwoods, hmm. but I, but that's artistic license because the snag, like when I tried the snag, like something wasn't right there because when you view it from another angle, it makes sense. But it just when I put that snag in there, and it's just a wooden dowel with wire and some, uh, you know, texture paste. It wasn't that hard to make. Actually, it was one of the easier because there's still foliage on it, right? Yeah, right. There's <laughs> no know, flocking. Easy. Like yeah. snags, but who does snags? Like, do you ever think of that? Like they're everywhere. They're powerful, man. Yeah. You know, throw a snag or two into your tree grove and watch it pop, you know. So anyway, so on the prototype, you can see the reef there. Like that's compressed a bit. But on that corner, like it does turn like that, but not as sharp. It's actually more straight. It would go off to the right. But I had to bend that bend, right? I had to bend that curve to, you know, to stay in the room kind of thing. Otherwise, I would have had to punch a hole in the wall. But um those trees like that tree placement is actually prototypical there are trees there actually way more actually the trees come all the way down to the pile of ties and the switch down there like on the prototype wow but i didn't want to put trees there i want to look at that area and i just wanted a little hint of trees in the foreground there huh. yeah that's really cool so yeah. um so with the so with with the broad curves here i know we wanted to just you know briefly you know, touch on this topic. Um, is there anything else that, that you wanted to, I guess, convey? So as you go around the layout here, this is only the one half of the U, correct? So the other, you know, as we go around, there's going to yeah, be right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Full length. You mean, yeah. I haven't so, developed anything past that. Well, that, I mean, I have plans, but, and I have the overpass, which you don't see, cause I got it up above. I don't want it to get pranked because of the railings. Yeah. But then like, in that spot right there okay like you see that empty parking lot right there yeah that point going out of the picture is another uh six feet and then it turns and goes down the other wall <laughs> Which, wow yeah so i'm excited like i i have stuff well i want to do the grain elevator like they took that down the milner yeah. grain elevator too Please. right like that's yep. for section three but the corner i was like i'm not I know we were talking last night. I should probably tell the community this. Like, I'm at a little bit of a loggerhead here. Like, I've stopped at the parking hmm. lot here. Um, I'm not even sure if I'm going to put the diner in there now. Like, I like I'm having. Like, I just want to think about it for a while. You know how you need to. Okay, so here's a good example. So, I'm going to sit on this spot. Like, I'm going to do some other stuff. I'm going back to the barge slip. I'm going to draft up some plans for the, for the uh, tug and stuff. But. I'm going to hold off on this parking lot part here for a while. I'm going to let it steep. I know something will come. It's just like this grassy knoll. 
Yeah. Like, I don't know if you remember, like somebody had said, what are you going to do there? Like session two, like you've got action steel. Like what? I said, I don't know, but I'll figure something out. And when I started doing that sort of, you know, cedar grove kind of tree section, I was, wasn't sure about it. Right. But it yeah. actually turned, but it was that retaining wall that made it all work. But I didn't know that I, I wasn't there yet. But when I put that retaining wall in, in the parking lot, all of a sudden it was like a chapter ending right there. And I thought, okay, it works up to here. It works. What I'm going to do next. I'm not sure, but I have faith that I'll figure something out, but I'm having like, I, I'm not uh, like I was going to do a small sliver of new Westminster sort of architecture, but I'm not a big fan of elaborate architecture, you know? Hmm. Yeah. Like another thing I think we mentioned we were going to talk about. Yeah, okay, there's another angle. Yeah, this is Big Bend again, looking at it straight on here with the snag you were talking about, right? Yeah, and then Axton Steel. So it's very prototypical right to Axton Steel, the right side of Axton Steel. But in reality, the tracks would go past that big spruce, like the big spruce by Axton Steel. Like on the prototype, if you can picture it, would go between there, but it would be further out. But you can't like you got to make the turn right yeah right like how are you gonna like you can take a layout plan and then you can bend it right like you can take a prototype plan and then bend it to fit your your footprint and that's what i did there hmm. and then i used artistic license on artistic license on those trees because i wanted to be, be you know, like I wanted to have it to be very BC. So when you looked at it, okay, this is Southern British Columbia. Yeah, right. So out of curiosity, um, do you use like trees in the foreground as to kind of break up your scenes or like that I one I did, yeah, which is yeah. that yeah. Uh okay. you've seen the latest video, right? Like you've seen the latest upload? Uh from today. Yeah. Boy, I haven't. Uh, the cottonwood I, blind yeah so i yeah. talk about that yeah okay I, I uploaded it this morning it's called the cottonwood blind it's vlog number 163 i talk about that uh i don't show how i made the cottonwoods but i can though i like i did cover it but i thought people were kind of overdosed on trees but yeah so here's so another just, another yeah. snag back yeah. here too yeah i made a bunch of snags on that last tree binge and i got another pallet of trees but i don't really need them right now the trees so Andy, would that be kind of similar, like if we wanted to model like a cedar swamp around here with those snakes yeah. and stuff like yes, that? Yes, absolutely. Like, like really, I mean, not to that scale, you know, but I mean, yep. it'd be obviously much smaller, but I mean, the cedar swamp would be another place where you could get like a lot of those snag type trees and like, you know, deadish, deadish kind of looking trees and stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, trees, you know, there was a lot of pushback on that, you know, the height of them, right? Like you see the ones at the back there? Like yeah. those are those are 16 inches high, but they're also on a slope. So the top of the sheeting on the balance is about 18 inches. So wow. they're so they're broken off at the top, like the real trees are. Like I like I actually compressed those trees. Like those aren't even the real height of the actual trees that I modeled, right? Like that spruce on the left, that's down the street. I modeled that almost to the T as a model prototype tree. And then the cedar is another model one in the area. And they're actually shorter, like the models, than they are than they would be in HO scale. So, yeah. you know, but you know, no. we're not used to looking at that, right? We're not used to that. Um, no. That's no, the people... problem. The problem I have with cottonwood trees is that depending on the time of the year that you're modeling, you have to model a shed from the cottonwood trees too. Yeah, no, no, I don't want to do that. And so <laughs> it makes me sneeze. My allergies. Oh, I know, know. right? Yeah. I mean, look how at is... the switch stands, right? Like, look at the switch stands, Mike. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See the switch stand beside the tree. Now, is the tree too big? I don't think so. See? No. Like, you're right. No. It's that's a small tree, right? really compared to what I see around here close to the CN right away down the road here, there's some huge trees down there, you know, even so if, it's even a, in Northern, either, even in Northeast Wisconsin and, and East central Wisconsin, like we're, we're Andy, I'd say you're East central, right? Andy. Yeah, kind you of can East call central. it that. So, I mean, your typical trees are actually anywhere from, what would you say, Andy, from, 
18 to 36 inches in diameter as a root your old growth stuff your under car. your underbrush stuff is really you know it, you know depending on what you're trying to model yeah you know for a tree i mean if you're trying to do like a deciduous forest and you're trying to see what is like right on the edge you're going to need that combination of the old and the new growth and you're going to have yep. to have all that other stuff right but out, out where he's is at and trying to model that stuff is gargantuan the, i mean so there's yeah, i can't so even comprehend yeah. those sizes like that you know yeah okay there it is 16 inch eight so okay right okay so 110 feet or 120 yeah yeah i guess so so the spruce in the background and the cedar those trees are like 150 feet high like the like down the street here but they're only 16 inches high so i compressed the height of the trees again <laughs> yeah and the uh the butt like the spruce in the background is one of my favorite ones that's uh almost nine feet like if you felled that tree and put a tape measure across the the, the stump it would be nine feet and the cedar on the right is of ten and a half which is com which is common out here that's yeah. cedars and then the one in the foreground that that snag there is about five and a half feet the five feet of a, like it uh, depends where you cut it right because it's yeah. flared right right so, right you know like i got this like uh, this concept like there was a guy that did a uh diorama a, a pacific northwest modeler uh i showed the magazine I, like i don't have it here but he did this uh ho diorama of uh burlington northern like remember the white faced you know jeeps oh yeah, that, yeah, uh, yeah. Or, yep. or, or sorry the you know that neat paint scheme the sd40s with the white face and the green and he had them going through a grove of trees that was about eight feet long and it blew my mind like it just blew me away and people were like really disturbed by it like oh they're too big you know right and i thought man this guy's really on to something but it didn't take right and uh, i think there's reasons for uh i mean it's okay like back east the trees aren't large right no they can be they're, they're not be, large yeah. like on the west coast i mean they're also different types of trees over there okay too. so I mean... yeah right okay so that's i'm up on a step ladder and i'm probably nine feet up there wow look at looking down with my slr and you can see my workbench so i have lighting under there too i got led lighting up under that top upper balance that curve like see how it curves the same way as the fascia it mirrors it right yeah, yeah. okay so if you put a piece of plexiglass in there, let's say it would fit perfectly like all the way along. But um, down below is like the ceiling too. It's just got LED lights underneath it as well. And I got bench work under there. And that's where I do my work. I walk in in the morning and I got something on the go and I can leave at a moment's notice or walk into it and I stand up and that's what I see, right? That's my, like, I look to the left, I see that big bend. I love looking at that. I can look at it all day long. And uh, that's why I did that. But, you know, actually scenic, that was the first area I scenic on the whole layout. Like right there where that ballast pile is to the right where the ties are. Yeah. See that little uh, maintenance road, that little there. Like I did all, that was the first scenery I did on the whole layout. <laughs> wow. Because I wanted to look at that in the morning. I wanted to be inspired by it. And all those ties there, those turnouts, Andy, when you zoomed in, remember? Like they're yeah. all white, they're all made of plastic. Everything. Right. Yeah. Painted, right? You can't tell if they're wood or not. Wow. That's pretty and awesome. Brushed in acrylics and stuff. So <laughs> yeah. So so I mean, so this 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 these are cottonwood trees here in the Yeah, so I have one here, okay. Yeah, yeah let me pull you back here. <laughs> get the producer get the producer working here <laughs> murdering my money yeah, so tonight. Here, yeah so here's so i built three of these just a little while back and these are they're about 12 inches high so I'll, this is the smaller one and it's a wooden dowel with a nail in it right yep so i can plunge it into the drill a hole in the plywood or the foam and then i'm going to show like i'm not sure if i showed how i made like these branches are really easy to make you twist wire and yep. then you you uh, drill them and you insert them into the wooden dowel. Uh, you could flock them. Oh yeah, here let me show you this too because I got this out. Um, so this is a wooden dowel that's tapered with a plane, 
right? Yep. And then it's scribed with a hacksaw to put bark texture in it and then painted. Or you can texture it if you want, but you don't have to. And then um, here's an example of limbs. Like this is actually easier to build trees this way and they look pretty good. So here's just a wire. Just a, just a limb armature. Yeah, just a simple armature with, you know, eight or nine branches. And then I lay this down flat on parchment paper, right? Yeah. And then I just put glue on the ends of the branches and I stab uh, 12 mil static grass. I just lay it on top and press it down. Yeah. Like just, just tuft it in, right? Like just put it on the ends. Yeah on a parchment paper so that when it dries the next morning, it just pops off. And oh. all the uh, the 12 mil static grass spreads out like branches. And then you just soak it again with matte medium. You can dip it into a cup of thin, like watery matte medium right. and then just throw flocking on it. You can whip these off like, and they look awesome. And then I airbrushed them. I took the green, like I don't leave anything to stock color, I paint everything. Right. Yeah. Remember I talked to you about that, Andy, yeah. about how I paint yeah. everything. Right. If it's green because it knocks the sheen down. So I sprayed them a lighter green. You can hit them. You can change the color if you want. And then I just touched up with some brown. And then I just cut off this end. Yeah. It's always hard to do with a webcam, isn't it? So I cut yeah, off. They're... Like you see the loop, right? Yeah. I cut that oh, off. Yeah. And then I drill a hole with a Dremel. And I just build the tree like a model. And then I can do this all day long. Look. I can bend these limbs. I could bend them out of the way like that. Yeah. Stick another tree in here, pull them back. Like I can compose the tree all day long and it doesn't shed and fall apart. Right? Hmm. Like this tree is good for a long time. So we got it. We had a couple of questions come in. Uh, Humanity Junction says, is anyway. there any, anything on your layout that you would want to improve upon? AKA, you learned something uh, since you worked on it and you wanted to try it again. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you. Okay. Good question. Right. <laughs> I love these kind of questions. Okay. So I would, uh, if I could redesign uh, the uh, section one, um, I would have made it a little bit deeper, even though I don't like to go deeper than, you know, two feet yeah. so that I could, so that I could, uh, could have put that spur in uh, for the brewery, like the prototype. I just didn't have the space. Can't have your cake and eat it too. You know, the footprint yeah. is established. Uh, but if I ever read, like, if I had read, like, redid that scene, I would put the uh, spur in that runs up against the loading base and then the main there as well and, like, widen that more like the prototype and really, because it, I just had to cheat it. I had to lay ties and rail there to make it look like there was something going on there, but it's not even what, like it wasn't wide enough to get the track in there. Right? It wouldn't have, wouldn't have had the 13 foot center to center clearance. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. And it's oh, not 13 man. feet anyway. It's more because I showed that on the video when I walked the area and then, uh, I would have uh, built the, uh, barge slip, the prototypical length. I had to shave off like, I don't know, 30 feet or, 20 feet or something mm. like that. I had to squeeze it a bit because that curve and everything, trying to plan it all in, you know, just two more feet, right? Or just five more inches, please, you know? Isn't yeah, that, right. That the way it is, though, like, yeah. isn't that the, the curse of model railroading? Uh, oh, if I just had two more feet or if I just had five more inches or if I just, like, that's the beauty of model railroad. There's always a problem to solve. And if you love solving problems, which I do, then, then it's a marriage made in heaven. Yeah. Model railroad because so, I, because I love that. So th that's really cool. So then is that, uh, there was a, there was a question earlier about, so you, you're solving a problem. There's, you're, there's no, I guess, uh, one method to your, to your compression or to no, your, you know, so it's, it's, it's all, it's all a new problem, new way to solve it every time. Right. Yeah, you can't really write a book on it. Like, yeah. uh, frankly, when I try to explain it with the artist mind, like, uh, like I'll listen to the video. I go, oh, geez, this sounds like <laughs> What's this now, some bro? kind yeah. of black magic alchemy, right? I hope they can kind of, like, I try really hard to convey compression. Like, it's unique to every individual and every layout and every plan. Yeah. The concept, right? 
because you want like a scene like that scene like okay so andy there's a picture of the warehouse from a certain angle yep uh the one with the blue line on it uh looking from big uh from big ben the part the like the approach to the uh barge slip from um let's see which yeah. one was it there i think i have it here yeah there's two there's one from the bar okay yeah there's one from the barge slip and one from uh the big ben parking lot this little guy yeah okay so the prototype like that is squeezed so much right like i would have needed another two feet past the wall to really because that's there's a huge parking lot there yeah with trucks and everything trailers they were all over the place like i had to just so that that middle track there was just another spur that ran parallel to the one up against the loading base that's prototypical there but that spur there that you got your your cursor on i i revised that and pulled it away from the building and turned it into a runaround and ran it down into big bend mm. and it made so much sense because now i can run see because there's a way to run around there see yeah right and uh what's interesting is i haven't been down there for a while but when i was down there like just around the COVID time and things were really kind of nightmares to go anywhere yeah. uh i went down there and there was all these ties and rail and all kinds of stuff and then there's an improvement project that a video on it too and i think they've changed it down there like i'm i wouldn't be surprised i gotta go down there and get more video again do another rail fan trip down there and uh, see if they've made any changes because i think they were looking to uh because there was a problem when Amazon bought that building and SRY, they had a like a big battle eh? hmm. of uh, some magnitude there. You know, when they put the... <laughs> obviously yeah, the, war... the warehouse lost out. <laughs> yeah, or the railroad, I mean, the yeah, railroad SRY lost. SRY owns the parking lot though. Like SRY owns that huge area where the barge slip approaches. Like they own all that space. But uh, Amazon bought that building. Like that building is what it looked like uh, 20 years ago. Right? That's oh. the way it was. It had a blue line on it like that. And it's out of service. But see, I put it in service on River Road. Yep. And I put, uh, but the brewery is out of service, but there's still rail there. But the rail there that you're pointing to, they put air conditioners and built it right into the trap. Like they like they hammered in posts and everything. It was unreal. Like you never seen anything like it. Like the fencing. I wish I had a picture. It's in a video though. Like the shelf level philosophy one that I did yeah. uh, ten days ago. I like I walked down the actual prototype and I show what happened down there. They just put fence up. Like they must have told the country, oh yeah, just put the fence right into the track and, and they built the fire escapes and cut new doors and and put a floor in that warehouse above the blue line and you know it's all changed quite a bit. So I modeled it. You know, I backdated it to, uh, you know, the uh, late 90s, 2000-ish, or, or actually 2000 era, 2005 to 2010, somewhere in there. Hmm. Yeah. And, wow. like, notice the simplicity of that scene, right? There's nothing to that. It's just a tilt-up wall with there's a telephone pole, like, on an angle, just a little bit there. One of the doors is partly open. I don't know if it's that one there. If you slide over to the right. Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. So you see how the door is just part way open, right? It's yep. not fully up or fully closed. You know, somebody was going out for a smoke or, you know, I don't know, you know, right. Right. Um, very simple scene. Like you don't need to be elaborate to uh, make a scene look prototypical. Right. But the well, curves, notice the curves. That's really, really, uh, that's really the magic or the trick, I think, to make a scene really look prototypical. Even if it's freelanced or revised heavily or compressed, if you have the wide curves, you can, any scene will look real or realistic, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so oh, I keep I keep messing up this this feed here. So, on the big curve. So let's just review review here. So in Big Bend, it's a 60-incher, um, roughly 60-inch radius. What's the depth of the benchwork then in that area? You said it was two what? Two feet. Two but, feet. Uh, that corner's almost three feet. 
Yeah, that right. corner is three feet. Okay. Yeah, because when you put the curve in the corner, you bring the layout out, right? But if you go to the other pick from the other angle, you'll see, I think, that corner. And it's it's acceptable because I don't have to reach in there. Like yeah, right. To re-rail a train or reach in or whatever. Uh, you know what I mean? Like that's, I mean, there's a lot of thought behind you shouldn't build your bench for deeper than two feet. I mean, it's not a, a law. It's just, you know, like a, what are the givens or druthers, right, of model railroading if you need to reach in and not break stuff? Like that's, we all know what that's like. We break more than we build something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's how you learn too, right? You, you, that's, that's how you learn. Yeah. That's how you learn how to to come up with new ways of holding something that you, you, you know, guys have, you know, those those yeah. holder things have come, been invented by stuff like that. You know, it's, it's just. Like there's a lot of chain link fence I have to do yet in this area. Like remember, okay, so this is section one. But I remember how I told you, like, I might be cycling back, like some of the content, like I'll be doing in the next month or two, it might be uh, based on section one and some of the details I want to do. Like, I wanted to do the chain link. There's quite a bit of chain link fence, like where the barge slip is. I don't know if I, did I send you? Yeah, um, I sent you a pic looking from the barge slip, Andy. Yeah, right there. Okay, so there's quite a bit of, okay, you can see the corner down there. Like, see where that box car is? Yeah, that's an Accurail, by the way, Andy. Remember we were oh, I love that. that. Yeah, I, I love, love that. that. I, lo I love Accurail stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hashtag I not too, sponsored. Man. I love yeah. them too, man. They look good. I don't know. There's something about them. They're Accurail. They're simple. You can detail them. They're cheap. Yeah. Um. So that cell tower, like that, comes out. That's just the standard because there's a there's a alleyway that goes there. That's how you get into that area. But that's mm -hmm. just for now. I haven't dealt with that yet. But there's all kinds of uh, compound chain link fence that goes along that container there. Like, see the container? Yeah. Under the tree there? There's yeah, right there. Of, yeah, there's a section of fence that goes along the top of it, like a one foot high. And then it goes around the uh, yard office. And then goes in front where the wood to the pavement is. There's a chain link gate, security gates there because the cameras and everything. And then there's fence along the riverside of the uh, chain link as well, so people can't get onto the bar shop, like down on the, the, the reef there. I got to do all that, but I didn't do it because I was, was reaching over everything, right? So that's yeah. all kind of done now. And then you can see the stanch and the light stanch, and I just did the little gray light stanch on the foreground down in the right corner there. I just did those. Those uh, I'm making the light stanchions out of brass, and they drop in. That's a mm. plastic pocket. There's small square canis brass that are hollow for the wiring for LEDs. And then wow. there's six that lights up the hole for night ops, right? Yeah. I made Acuril price go up, yeah. Oh, I love Acuril, <laughs> man. I got a bunch of them sitting around. I, I love painting them, yeah. That's awesome. But uh, yeah, so, and I've, believe me, I've broken that rail two or three times now. I was going to ask, how many how many times have you busted that off? Three times I broke it. Yeah. But I glued it. I ca it back. It's okay. Yeah. ca is a necessary evil, but it works for that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, I would have done that at a brass. You could solder that and put it in a jig, but I just wanted to get that project done. So I got to, like, I'm not finished the bar except there's those light stanchions. And then uh, there's some work I got to do on the, where the, there's kiosk on the towers. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, I know the wooden deck. I was really kind of got lucky there. I think I was in a zone, and it's all evergreen. The whole thing, evergreen styrene. Yeah, the whole. Uh, it's built on uh, three H vaulted birch plywood. <laughs> and then, I'm just uh, Mike's reaction. <laughs> He's just. I it's can't. under the playlist. Like, if you want to see how I built it, uh, it's under the playlist. Uh, building the barge slip. And I decided I wanted to build it all out of plastic because I wanted to weld everything. Right? Like, yep. Like, I don't know if I mentioned this to you, uh, Andy, and I probably might upset some people when I say this, but okay. I don't like using CA. I use it yeah. only if I absolutely have to, but I don't like gluing plastic parts or anything with CA. I hate CA. It falls apart in five years. It uh, soaks into the paint, and then it hardens the paint, turns it into a blister, and it falls off. If you bump it, eventually it does, 
it's the models will start to shed parts that you glue brass to plastic with, especially painted parts. But mm -hmm. I use CA because I have to use it sometimes. Like if I have to glue a brass part to, to plastic, then what am I going to do? Then I usually sand it. I clean the paint off it and I put tooth on both surfaces because CA is a mechanical bond. It's not a chemical. It's bond. not chemical. But when I built the barge slip, I built it all out of plastic because I wanted to weld everything. And even though those railings are a tad fragile, they're still like they took a good, good blow to break them. But uh, yeah, it's all plastic. And when I painted it, it was all thin acrylics uh, with the airbrush. Hmm. And uh, I so, just got, in, got into a zone for three days, like eight hours a day. And I just got on it and I just started pumping away and didn't leave it because I didn't want to lose my mojo on it. And it and it came out pretty good. I was really happy with it. But uh, but that joinery right there, like, you know what the hardest part of that whole build was? Like, see where the, uh, so the barge slip is a, it's a tongue, right? Like, see where it meets the landing? Yes. Yeah. See where the, yeah. Okay, right there. So there's a stove bolt under the layout. If I pull the stove bolt out and I wiggle, there's, there's a deeds plug because it's all wired, the barge slip, the electrical. There's a deeds plug behind there I just unplugged. And I wiggle that, and it, there's a tongue. It's like a cabinetry type tongue. It slips in, so the whole barge slip comes off, right? Yeah. In case I ever have to move it, uh, I would never want to move it with the barge slip like that, like a ten foot module. Uh, no way. Yeah, that'd be tough. To get KO'd, right? Yeah, for sure. So that was pretty uh, challenging to get that level. So when it slid in place from. And I had to build the two joinery sections really beefy. I think I used epoxy and plywood and made it really strong. So if the shelf layout moves, that section won't move. Everything else will move, but not because it really? all moves, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Layouts move with humidity and, and even in climate control. They, right. They, they do attract. shrink and expand. Oh, and Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, you'll notice with yours, Andy, like give it another year, eh? And you'll notice oh. some stuff. <laughs> so I've noticed that on, on cold nights when I'm down here and even, you know, I keep it relatively regulated temperature wise, but you know, when it gets dry and you get the cold, dry winter, you start to hear the creaking and the cracking. And I was sitting here building a model yeah. and it, you know, and you're just like, what's going on here? The layout's starting to talk to me and yeah, it's getting, it's getting, um, it's yeah. It's interesting to, to see it shift over time. So there's a couple couple uh, comments here uh yeah. mike people are asking if you're doing okay <laughs> you okay mike <laughs> i'm fine everything's fine it's gonna be fine um, yeah. everything's fine yeah um yeah, I'm yeah, doing, yeah, it's just get on it the just, short line uh, it just blows it just blows me away <laughs> I, I mean if he if he wouldn't have said and i mean i've i've watched the video on how he made that it still blows me away that yeah. if you never would have said that that was styrene, you wouldn't know it. Right, exactly. You would swear to God that was wood. You I know? love building with styrene plastic. Like, I know there's a... Uh, okay, so when I started, like, like in my 20s, I was into narrow gauge, like this kind of thing, but ON3, right? This is just something I built, a scratch build, dead rail, uh, FN. This is FN3. One, listen to this, 120.3. <laughs> Let that confuse you, right? But anyway, um, I was into the narrow gauge ON3, so it's three foot, and I used to build everything out of wood, like uh, back in the 80s and stuff, right? Yeah. Like, wood build, like wood buildings out of wood, like that made sense, right? Right. But when it comes to modern architecture, we're dealing with concrete, <laughs> right? Right. And brick and brick. And I learned from a guy, I went to a show, went to, like used to go to the IPMS shows, you know, the International Plastic Modelers Association. Like they're the rivet, rivet counter guys of the model kits, like mostly aircraft and tanks. You know, they do the dioramas and stuff. I used to go to those shows a lot, like in the 80s and 90s. And this guy did this uh, building. It was a wooden building. And I swear it was wood. And he said, no, it's all plastic. He had a little like a portfolio and he showed me. I was totally blown away. I said, how did you do that? Right. And uh, he showed me how to do it. He said, I just use a razor saw, a number 11 blade, and that's it. And he wow. showed how he's, you know, described 
like you scribe the plastic, like you make like plastic makes dust, right? Like just yep. like wood, but it doesn't go fuzzy. Like it has a like, and then you wipe it with 600, you just stroke it with 600 sandpaper and it looks awesome. And you, and you airbrush it with flat to me and then put an oil wash on it. It just pops. Like, yeah. And it stays like that too. And you can, uh, you can cut it, you can, you can crack it, you can score it and break it and twist it and glue it. You can weld it nice. And it's really versatile when you get into scratch building with plastic. It's not that difficult once you get into it, right? You start getting, you like build a flat. Like that's what I tell people, man. You want to learn yeah. how to scratch build? Build a warehouse flat. Like Mike. Mike, you've built it. Yeah, them. Mike. Where's your warehouse? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> your warehouse, man. Where is it? Oh, it's it's in your room. I'll go get it. Hold on a minute. I'll, I'll yeah. be right back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So plastic. So you know, I learned how to do wood. Like that guy inspired me. It was in the 80s. Like, you know how you go to a to see somebody build something, you go, oh man. And, you know, we talked about, Andy, I think the last show, like, don't be intimidated by other models right. that you think are better than you. Be inspired by them, right? Like, be yeah. challenged, right? Like, be motivated man, to do better, right? And that's what I do. That's all I do. And uh, there's so many good modelers out there. Oh, I mean, and painters. Yeah. You know, they're incredible, man, what they do. Like, now that new style of painting, they call it... Uh, it's this Spanish, there's a name for it. It's not really new. It comes from the classical era, but they have terms like, I wrote them down here. Okay, listen to this, right? <laughs> okay, okay, so uh, they they use terms like this. Like, it's really opaque. Like, it really stands out. Like, when you put it on social media, like Facebook, like you see a model kit, like, they're really flashy. Like, they just, you know, like figures now they're doing fantasy, but tanks, planes, they have this new style now, like the younger generation. They're awesome, man. They're 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 way better painters than I am. I'll tell yeah. you that right now. I have a uh, desaturated, thin wash style. That's all that that's all I do, right? That's my style. But these guys can paint and make a model pop. It's incredible. But they have these names. They call it unify, blend, reconcile, and modulate. Right. Mm. Okay, so those are all terms that the masters already were doing way back when they're painting canvases and watercolor yeah, right. and field sketches. So it's not new, right? They didn't invent it. They just took that and put it into the model miniature world in the same way I took the diorama concept and merged it and fused it into the shelf layout. That it's just a progressive evolution of the art form in whatever genre or aspect that you're into, right? Yeah. It's not new, it's just innovative, right? Apply so, differently. Yeah, apply differently. So paint can transform just about anything. <laughs> like there's many different methods, right? Like you know, like uh, our our buddy the mud, <laughs> the mud Ralph, father, the mud Ralph, father, right? Ralph, I know you're watching, right? Yeah, Ralph's a good painter, man. He like uh, he knows, like he sees it, right? Like he sees it in yeah. his mind right here, and he studies the photo and he translates it. And I bet you he doesn't tell you. Oh, okay, there. Okay, look at that there. There it is. Yeah, so this is this is inspired by this this was inspired by the, the way Boomer does did the uh it looks like the building concrete, we were man. Yeah, it looks, it looks like, like concrete. There's like yeah. uh, what is it what is it like four different colors on here, five different colors? Yeah, and then so the way could, the the way yeah. I did my doors, the way I did my doors were I, I just used like corrugated let's see if i can get in here that better you know what ah you just gotta paint those a different color Ooh. now and they'll pop like cream colored or something or why am i making this so hard can't know mike it's what yeah, you there do it is. oh yeah okay now you can see the corrugated door so that's yeah. just evergreen roofing turned sideways right yeah and yeah. and so there's that but i i did the dock so in a way that if i wanted to right on if, the dirt the tar and gravel roof dirt yeah right? That's just sand. That's just yeah. sand. It's just sand from out in my driveway. Yeah. And then awesome. these vents, these vents are actually because this is S scale. I decided I wanted the roof vents. These are Rick's products HO scale roof vents, and I think they look better in S than they do for HO. I think they're more yeah. correctly sized. They cross but over. I, yeah, they're big vents. Yeah. But I did this with the dock. If I want to take these docks and I want to put this against. Say I want to put this up against the wall someplace and I want the track to come closer and eliminate this dock. I actually use drywall screws. That dock isn't actually glued onto the rest of it. 
then yeah, doc will pull great. right off and then i can just then i can just go back over this with my airbrush and redo that paint on the bottom that'll look so awesome when you get weed like when you get it laid in your place like you know like where you put it mike and then have weeds growing up like grass along the edge and stuff and old tires and 50 gallon drums and you know. Oh, and then and then the numbers. I just cut out. I figured out. I found a font close to some warehouses that we have in town here that I used to deliver boxcars to, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of neat. And I took a piece of cardstock and cut the number out using a stencil. I, I actually printed yeah. it on the computer and then I cut it out and then I used that as a template and I just airbrushed. That's a, that number is airbrushed on there. Yeah, so, nice, nice. Yeah, so and then I just used some washes and stuff for the doors. Yeah, not real happy with the way this door turned out, but yeah, with some rework it more. When you yeah, it, it. so I mean that's, but it was all like inspired by what you showed doing with with your stuff and it with how that warehouse came out. And I'm like, oh boy, I it 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 it, it was amazing. It was amazing as I watched it come together, and I actually. Took a bunch of pictures with the shadowing and all this other kind of stuff, and I'm sitting there going, "He's right. Anybody can do it. Yeah, anybody can do it. <laughs> anybody can do it somewhere, right? Just, yeah. Do oh, doors and, are easy. And, yeah. and and look at that end is actually not as this end yeah, is wider. Right. Yeah, yeah, good. So, good. so I don't have it at the parking lot where my. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see by my overpass I'll... there, Mike. If you get bored with it, send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> sure thing. Yeah. But it's all made out of wood in the back. I started with the wood yeah. frame. Nice and sturdy. This, yeah. This this thing's what, not good. What this kind of wood a... did you use there, Mike? I used uh I got it from Menards. It's just it's just I believe it's, it's hobby acid. plywood, right? It's that hobby plywood is all it is. It's just yeah. eighth inch hobby plywood, and it's nice just and solid, eh? Oh yeah, this thing is going. I mean, it's probably the most solid building I've ever, you know, structure I've ever built. You know what and, the advantages too of building like that is, like, just say you're you're building a like a shelf layout. Let's say, you know, let, like you know, you start a small one, and then you start like you build one or two warehouses. If you build them really nice and solid, at least you can carry them to the next layout. Like, like maybe right. you might abandon. Like you might say, oh, I don't like this track plan, or you know, this isn't really going in the way I want it, and you can just pop them off. And they're keepers, right? And yep. you can restage them, and you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, like they're not like disposable; they're solid keepers in that sense, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I was really happy with the way this turned out, and it's not done. I want. I've got some details on it. I want to do. I want. I've got a little, some lighting things that I want to add to it and stuff like that. But I'm not going to go overboard on that till I get right into the meat and potatoes of where i'm actually going to have yeah. it on the layout you know for yeah, I know. Sure. i'm anxious to see some of that hey so i don't forget but this is for ralph here okay ralph here's the uh, oil of the week right here Can you see the color? <laughs> is that amblin <laughs> yeah yeah gambling but see the color ralph oh Pains boy gray Pains Pains gray. gray. <laughs> so uh for all you uh aspiring painters that want to make your own uh taco sauce wash that's no fail for grays cool colors and for you know browns and greens warm raw umber and Payne's gray and lots of thinner over to me acrylic the magic you can't go wrong yeah. so so ralph gambling <laughs> Windsor and Newton. <laughs> anyway, I thought, was, thought I'd share that with Ralph. I planned it last night, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I think so. Uh, I think we'll have to take a, a small uh, break here. Mike, are you ready for short line of the show? Sure, why not? Okay, let's <laughs> let's kick it off here, and uh, I'll cue the band, and we'll get her going here. All right, time for short line of the show, Mike. What do you have for us this evening? All right, we're in the great state of Maryland. There you go. Maryland, 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 Maryland. Yeah, that's where we're at. And 
so I, <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, I didn't think a lot about this one. It was a railroad that I had right on the tip of my tongue the second I knew we were going to Maryland. I had, I've had i actually had this one penciled in for a while. Really? The next one I actually already have penciled in because I already know what we're going to be going to Mass. We're going to Massachusetts. I already know exactly what railroad I want to do for that. So uh, um, the these two are kind of a little bit more on the easier side for me to, to figure things out. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to get my, I'm going to get my, uh, my production value here up and running. Let's see. What are we doing? We're going to go with, dun, dun, dun. Uh oh, oh no. Oh yeah. Cool. Nope. Got, <laughs> got, right. got it. I got it. <laughs> here we go. All right. Can you guys see that? Yeah, we got the, her now, Mike. All right, the Canton Railroad. Da, 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 this da, 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 da. now, this railroad is very similar to the SRY, except for way on the other side of the on the other side of the continent. On the other side of the continent, it is a grand total of, I believe, what's it say, twenty three miles long. Hmm. It has six miles of main line, but 17 miles of secondary trackage. Figure that one out. So what would be second? <laughs> so what's secondary trackage? Oh, well, let's take a look at the uh, the old map. Or Let's see. Do, can you see the map that I just pulled up or no? No, no, I can't. Okay, how about that now? That looks better. Zoom in. Uh, can you so make it like, bigger? I'm not sure if I can zoom Control in or not. Control wheel. Control what? And then your scroll wheel. Control, scroll wheel. Oh, look at that. You just learned something, Mike. I learned I, I learned a lot. Uh, <laughs> okay, so the Canton Yard operations are basically right down here. It's Canton Railroad is in and around the Baltimore area. And how it was developed is, I'm just going to flip back to that original tab here. Um, basically... They dredged the harbor to 35 feet and in order to get more shipping into Baltimore Harbor, into the harbor or in and around Baltimore. Well, the two railroads in the area were the B&O and the Pennsylvania. They wanted nothing to do with that. Really? Yeah. So the, the, uh, the Canton Railroad Company was chartered in 1906 and specifically to build a railroad to connect to these two big the b and o in the pennsylvania hmm. from the heart from the harbor to connect to them basically and there's it so it's it's a really neat little railroad now we're gonna go back to the map uh da, 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 i'm learning how to do so much of this yeah you're doing real good tonight mike yeah i know don't worry it'll i'll screw something up but <laughs> um but they have the, the thing i love about this map is that it points out all the major customers that are on the line and where they are. So from one point to the next, I'm just going to, where my cursor is right down here, from that point up to where this Avesta Sheffield is, I believe, or somewhere in there, this is a long branch, which I believe is considered a secondary main. So really? this is, yeah, this would be the secondary trackage hmm. from this point over here to connect up with the railroads up by this Apollo warehouse and Cambria iron metal. Um, that would be, I believe if I'm, if I'm correct, that is the original main or that is the main line. So, and then you have other branches coming off of this and it's really, really kind of neat. Now, the, I'm not going to lie. It, you could go and design this as a layout to do all sorts of switching, and we'll get into that here in a minute. But the coolest part about this whole railroad is the paint scheme of their locomotives. Yeah. I mean, it is. How do you love that? That's 
pretty wild. <laughs> that not crazy. Now, believe it or not, and I'll get to it here in a little bit, but there is a model railroader article on how to paint these locomotives. No, complete with a schem- a draw a drawing as to how to map out all of the deals on there, whatever you want to call that, the pattern, how to map out the pattern, how you want to map that out, and how to map out the shield. It's it now I'm sure this is you could probably buy decals for this now. This actually, by the way, this is an old Milwaukee Road F, uh, uh, SW 1200. Hmm. Uh, so this is one paint scheme. Now this is from 1989. Now I'm jumping around a little bit because I just wanted to get into the paint scheme. <laughs> I just, this yeah, no, that's cool. fine. That's fine. Yeah. It's, so uh, David Winther seems has a has a theory here. That's the uh, the Maryland state flag. It is that, and I'm going to get into that. Here's their corporate. Uh, here's real quick. Here's their corporate website. Yeah. And they actually come out as our new locomotive look. And. Oh, that look at this effect on the graphics here. This is a really high production value. Here is a this is a former Santa Fe SW or I mean a GP7U. Yeah. And this is their new this is their new paint scheme with the with the little waves reminiscent of when the Sioux line painted their I believe the Sioux line had something similar to that when they had two of their SW1200s painted for the twin ports up in Duluth Superior. They had they had engines with little waves on it, kind of like that. But then they have the Baltimore skyline on it. Wow. And then the Maryland flag. And then the little crest. I mean, this Field. is, there's a, there's a lot going on. <laughs> that is, so that's not very railroady at all. No, no. Let's see if I can slide this over a little bit. And it says they're pulling for you or pulling for Maryland. Pulling for Maryland. Pulling for Maryland. So, but if you stop and really think about it, this really is indicative of what the railroad represents. You have the, the waves, you have the waves here representing the harbor mm-hmm. that they they actually uh, that they serve and you know inside the Baltimore skyline. And you know, they're they're a connecting, they're a they're a oceanic connection so to speak for sure for you know the state of maryland and and so i mean it it's a really kind of a neat paint scheme uh so we'll get back to the let's see here where's the corporate go back to the website so they have a a google map here which is a little bit i kind of found it on my own hmm. um no, I gotta find my tab here. Isn't it? This is high quality. Oh, here we go. Here's See, high quality. You're learning. Oh wow. Yeah, this is this is the here's the harbor. Oh, itself. there's the harbor right there. You're not far. Yeah. No, you're right on top of the harbor. Now the how I when I said that there was a a yard, that yard is right here. And the great thing about this is their yard and all their stuff, we can get right down and close to street view. And oh, wow. yeah, it's it's really, really kind of interesting to see uh other well, streets kind of flooded right there. Well, it is both oh, good. Words, low lying. Yeah. Hey, there's there's their locomotives. Back up. Yeah, I'm, I'm turning around. Yeah. There's a, there they are right there. Huh. There's a GP7U and a and, and an SW1200 right there. But and hey, look at that. There's a warehouse with a stripe on it. What do you know about that? <laughs> yeah, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> they're all there's a lot of those around. No shortage of those. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. So you know, you have a lot of quote unquote kind of terminal switching you can do with this. So you have uh, I'm gonna go back to. Can you stop gonna... right there, Mike, for a second? Yeah, yeah. Okay, like, okay, so let's like look at that scene there. Like, look how like 
see the dirt there like the track this yeah dirt, and there's different grades of gravel you see how it's heavier to the right yeah it yeah thins out then there's sort of a wet spot there there's just track some cars in a warehouse like you know what i mean it screams railroad uh like that, like that scene right there can be a powerful component on any shelf layout, right? And and then you have the be complicated and the and the chain link fence, to right? chain link fence to boot, you know that. Right. And that's and this was obviously at one point this was a gate here at one point. You know, yeah. just by by looking at the way this is configured, this is yeah, this right. Is, it's a gate or it was it, a gate. It either yeah. is a gate or was a gate at one point. So, um, yeah, you spray I mean, you, all that you just spray. That with earth, like thin washes of earth, like once you glue the dirt down, you just, or or you don't even need to spray. You just pour isopropyl alcohol, wet it all down, and then just pour right, paint, pour some paint on it, move it around with a big brush. And, and then see the other, th the other thing too is you have the the overpass yeah. right here that you could use as a view, as a scenic view block, you know, yeah. as a as a right. thing for entering the scene. Yeah. And then the huge billboard, and yeah, I mean, the there's billboard. so much going on with doing Google Google Maps. If you can really use, learn to use it, and then this, I thought this little structure here had those trailer thing had a lot of character yeah. to it too. The but ditch, there's a ditch there. The ditch right there, yep, with the little trees and everything. It's it's when you but, model those features, like when you, it's so easy to overlook that, right? You just see flat. Okay, I'll spread some scenery. But when you actually take the time to model those subtle details, that's what really makes makes the layout have personality and character, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. And and so this is a big yard. This yeah, is a is. very it's big better. yard. Right. And you go under oh, is that I-895? Obviously, that's what it says. And then this is <laughs> this is kind of nuts. Oh, yeah, double that. crossovers. It's a double crossover, but yet this is theirs. It's not this controlled is, or anything? No, because it's their own. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, man. This is... this That's is why has one of those, too. But it's double. all Canton Railway. As, as far as I could tell, this is all Canton Railway. As a matter of fact, this is cut off from the rest of the universe right here. This track oh, yeah, right look here. At that there, they pulled the turnout out. Yeah. Yeah, the turnout's out and it's out of the crossing. See, there's another feature you could model too. Like people, you know, right? Like you model that too. Yep. You Absolutely. Know. And then and then these things go back, and there's so much that you could take away by going and looking at the curve in the yard there, too. Oh, oh yeah. Look at that. Right. Look at that bend. And it's kind of a yard inside of a yard too. So you have there's you have thirty a, feet, right? You just <laughs> yeah, right. You just cover yeah, that's thirty feet of shelf that's thirty. There, that's man. thirty five. <laughs> and then you have this tank, this little tank transload right here. Yeah, I mean these are all scenic elements that you can all acid really. Cars, right? Yeah, uh, all acid yeah, those are yeah, those are acid cars. Yep, they're picking um, up some slurry somewhere. With with, with a nice little with a nice little. Uh, fence right here. Uh, oh yeah, there is there a, a gated gate. Fence, yeah. There's a gated fence right there. So, pull him back here a little bit more. You see, even that scene, you would have to close that up tightly. You'd have to compress that. Like, get, like if you tried to build like where your cursor is there, like right that here. Park, yeah, like that. Like if you tried to model it, that would gobble up so much space. So you're, so right. So uh, you'd have to probably lose a few of those tracks you'd have to move that building up in the left closer in you'd have to shorten that spur with the acid cars like that's the kind of thing that you have to do to get that feel into the right footprint the smaller footprint or the mm. limited one that we always have so would with. that be so would that be compression or would that be cropping then well one and the same thing really I mean, one of the same yeah, kind of the same thing yeah and the overpass, I mean, look at the overpass. I mean, that would take up, you know, six feet, seven feet right there. Right. I mean, that would and be it, ridiculous, you know. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff over here. There's a, I believe this is the, this is another, I think this might be one of the, the B&O or CSX yards. It, it's just so much going on. And then to boot, they've got a little r length of run. So when you follow this line that crosses single track line that goes up, if I remember that's the one to follow, 
there's yeah the back alley three. scenes there you go right yeah, yeah the Lance, you have uh, uh the lance midnight right he he really gets that you know that yeah like, you get you have all of these I mean? but it, but there's really nothing on them you have this little warehouse here but once you get past this boston street you're just hmm. single you're just single track running for a little while yeah. and then you get into some regular scenic elements yeah, residential that, yeah. residential areas you're going up you're getting into like a, a, a little look at that uh, just back up a bit you see the highway there's a retaining wall there the highway's elevated yep. above the track so yep. you could model you know, like if you model from the other side you could have that that uh, retaining wall highway as part of your backdrop so you're looking from that angle yeah. you know let's see if we can see that retaining wall at all there it is yeah see Look, it looks like a warehouse from there. Here's the, <laughs> here's, matter of fact, here's the tracks right here. Yeah. And there would be the look retaining wall. Look at the texture wall. on it. Yeah. Like, look at the paint peeling. Like, look at all the, uh, yeah. And the graffiti and stuff. Or no, is that the or cars there? Nope, nope. Yeah, that's graffiti. That's just what's on the wall. <laughs> that's just on the, on the wall. Yeah. But you, you have some real, real neat uh, elements here that, you could like really start to dive into designing a layout and yeah you take as a those matter snapshot scenes and just merge them together yeah. freelance them together yeah right. yep and and that's the beautiful thing of one thing that i'm starting to learn a lot about about google google maps and 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 the street views is you can actually save and take snapshots of those and use that as um inspiration to try to help with some of like your structure modeling and some of the things like that, oh, that you yeah. can, cause you, you might not be able to get certain angles from the regular road, but you might be able to drive right into a parking lot on here. Cause I mean, you're thousands or hundreds of miles away. So this is, this is pretty cool. A, a packing plant, not like we don't have everybody. No brother doesn't have Look a packing the roofs, plant. Right? The roofs are art in themselves. They're all different. Oh and yeah. Every roof color and texture and you know we think gray and brown but look at some of them you know they're yeah this looks like this this whole lot right here was re-roofed or or they ran out of a certain type of shingle and yeah. they used that and then they, they found it again and uh so look at the colors of the greens like see the the foliage there look at the there were the tracks running down through that yeah there Look at the different subtle greens. See that? Oh, there's yellow and green in there. Like that's just one green you can use, and you add a little bit of yellow to lighten it and a bit of olive to darken it. And you just move around with your airbrush and go over it like that, and it'll transform it. And it and then the same thing is with your, your containers too. Look at the containers. There's tons of containers sitting on the, in almost every parking lot here. Yeah. And and each one of those has got different subtleties to it. The roofs are done there, and those are, containers are nice and easy to do because they're, they're they're so they're lightweight. It's basically just a box, a rectangular box. Right here, I think they have a piece of track equipment right here. Look at the color of the right of way too, Mike. Like look at there. You like see the clay, yep. the tan. Like there's the ballast, the rusty rail, and then to the left, like up. See, yep. Up, up with your cursor, like the tan ditch there. Oh, right and, here. Yeah, yep. and then you can see they probably there's been Roundup sprayed through there. You can see the dead, you know that. Yeah, yeah, it's dead. Then there's it starts a, to grow it, back and and flush out more green further in. You know, this looks like it's standing water right in here. Yeah. So you can actually have some standing water in the ditch. The other thing is to look at is your tie spacing. You can see your tie spacing is a little bit closer right here. Not super tight like it would be for a 40, 50, 60 mile an hour main line but tighter than like what you normally would see. And then look at the tie spacing right here. This is a lot wider. So going into this right. industry track. Yeah. So, you know, right. doing things with your tie spacing can really like uh, uh, differentiate what type of track it is compared to, compared to what just buying a piece of flex track and doing stuff, yeah. you know, um, or you can so, cut ties out. Or you can use a piece of flex. Oh, yeah, cut, absolutely. Cut them and slide them, you know, space yeah. them out and stuff. So this is, this is, uh, well, here's a neat little recycling plant. Yeah, look at that. You got all yeah. sorts of options here for different uh, industries. and Big lumber, lumber 
place. It looks like Boise Cascade, as a matter of fact. Yeah, go. I mean, so you, you see have... that building? Okay, so you see that building? Just okay, right there. Hold it. Now, if you look at the size of the footprint of that building, you only need to model two percent. Like you just take a sliver off of that, you know, like on an angle where the two stick out like that. Yeah, like right <laughs> here, really like model, this yeah. profile. Right. Yeah. So your backdrop's behind that. You just model that, like those two corners. That's it. And your tracks in front, and you and you compress and make that parking lot a little not as deep. You see, to fit it into the space, like that's this this parking lot do. right here. Yeah, this part right here. Yeah, so you just pull everything in a bit tighter, right? And you shave off all the stuff you don't need. And then right. you got two tracks coming in here too. So you have actually yeah, you have wow, three, look at that. actually actually you have four. You have well, one track here, but two, there. and then you yeah. have. Two tracks right over here too, and then you got to track that tail track. Then you got a a, a a switchback track that comes back this way. It's all building supply stuff there. It's all building supply stuff. Yep. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, yeah. this was a runaround. Looks like parallel beams or something. That's that's really neat. What's it go back to? Let's see where it goes. Oh wow! Here, here's that's this. A, this debunks. Hey, this this debunks your. Uh, I need broad curves here. <laughs> look at oh, yeah. oh that's a, that's a, <laughs> yeah i that's know a, but if you were there though like if you stood like uh if you oh that's down there, that's a lot broader than it looks yeah. like yeah but then that comes all the funny way how back. we uh you know it's funny how we you know we use our imagination to to squeeze in the idea when in reality <laughs> well it's you know a little wider than you think right when that connects there. back up is no. this the stick yeah, doesn't it? I think you missed. But the yeah, switch you're there. right. There are tight curves in places. I've seen them. No, but, that's uh, a different main line. Yeah, it's something else. I think that might be the CSX or the B or, or or somebody else. But yeah, it's because it looks like the railroad actually ends right here. Mm -hmm. I think Lance Minheim, like he's really brilliant with his curves. Like if he uses a tighter curve more than what he would want, maybe he puts a building in front of it and everything. He kind of strategically kind of you know minimizes the look with a you know view block you know well here's here's some more here's i talked about i talked about uh a, a model railroad building it as a model railroad and there's a facebook page um that uh edward david actually has built wow, this as a That's nice it's the canton railroad and ho scale um wow. it's on facebook That's sweet yeah, is it that? yeah that is the this is there, the curving and the flag. This is such a neat wow, little look at that. Where is that on Facebook? Yeah, it's the can yeah. it's a uh, Canton Railroad HO skill is the wow, name. Look of at it. the overpass and underneath there. I like that. Oh it really pulls you check in. that out. Wow, that's nice. Isn't that something? Yeah, that's really nice. I like that. But there, that that might be right by. I don't know if this is right by that yard area, but that's exactly what you're talking about. It's pretty you're, cool. <laughs> this is, and then and then, I like the way he started doing his like the big cracks in the in the pavement and, uh, you know it, the the road isn't exact. This is the way a lot of our roads look like. You know, going through the tracks where they're blown out and everything. That's why you guys end up having to pay for new tires all the time when you're going over the tracks. But uh yeah, I think I think scenic get yeah the it's a the taco sauce out there, buddy. Come on, get some of that taco sauce into that <laughs> Yeah, right. No, it's beautiful. I like like look at the uh fascia too, the one fruit back. See that how it cleans it up nice? Yeah, oh nice? yeah, right here. Nice yep. boundary. Oh, yeah, it makes a big it makes it so easy on the eyes eh, when people do that. Oh, why is this all of a sudden not going? back to where i wanted to go there we go oh, no. now i'm going to uh now these are a pair of locomotives that he's actually wow. modeling they actually yeah. have they they actually have these two locomotives that are are these gen sets wow. they have and, gen sets yeah they've got a pair of gen sets that they've got uh, i'll get to that here in a sec it's really nice modeling uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, here's one of them right here, a picture of them wow, in 1987. I love, love it. I love it. That's man. a that harkens back to the original livery diesel livery from the 1950s. That's what the railroad's wow, livery nice. looked I like. I love those. Like I'm and not a fan nice. of those locomotives, but the livery 
really makes them look handsome. Eh? It kind of looks like the uh, Belt Railway of Chicago um, paint scheme a little bit. That's what it reminds me of, um, the, the old BRC paint scheme. Look at the but, busted barrier. What is that there? That is that concrete? That's a, con that rail. That's, that's a concrete barrier. Yeah, it's broken off or something. Yeah, yeah. It's a K rail that got smashed. Let's see. Uh, it's, it's got some more stuff. Nice. What I really, what I really want to get down to, I'm just gonna scroll all the way down here quick. Uh, so get go to Canton Railroad HO scale. Now, oh, on Facebook. Yeah, I'll get back up to it. Here's here's uh you're teasing us, Mike. You're teasing. I'm trying to uh I'm trying to find this model railroader, not that one. You just oh okay. No, not that one. There's another one. There it is. Now May of 1980. Hmm. Okay. Wow. Here it is, Canton's Railroad State Flag. And for some reason, I do believe I used to have or I have this somewhere in my in my stuff in the archives in the archives but it 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 really here's that description that i was talking about and and the uh a, a pattern for the that little shield or herald thing that they have but here's the pattern as to how to mask out the engine for to make that that stencil on the side it's just crazy <laughs> you know it's so cool it's uh no you wanted me to go back where do you want me to go boomer you want me to go up uh, uh there was some a, right, a shot of a right oh yeah right there uh, that right away no right yeah there right here right yeah, here what's that yeah that looks cool there this is right that, here this, yeah like is that the same layout yeah yep yeah right yeah yeah that's it but that's the thing okay see like, the track along <laughs> i'm just gonna say this See the track along the edge of the fascia there? Yeah, no, no, yeah, never. Do Danger. That. Yeah. Danger. I, I, Danger. I'd, I'd never do that, man. It's just you're asking for trouble there. <laughs> so is that one of those situations then where you just eliminate that and say, well, there's supposed to be something here, but well, it's his just... layout. He can do what he wants. So I'm just saying, right. I just try not to. Pr I like at least four inches. Like that space right there is good. But it looks as I, if he added on to the edge of the layout here to yeah. specifically to get this in. Right, right. But it looks good right there, that space there. That's why, like, you, yeah. can put, you can you can park a few vehicles or put a barrier there, like tidy it up. And but that you know, running track on the edge like that, ah, oh, that makes me nervous. Yeah, that's a nice layout. Though. I really like it. Yeah. Wow, that track. Cool. Isn't that cool? I think there was these are weren't these a kit available at one point. Those are nice. Is that HO? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'd like one of those. Jeez. Is that yep. a... Uh, that's a regulator. I wonder if that's a... Is that a metal kit? Is it metal? I would think it. I think they are or metal kits. Or yeah. uh, I believe there are pictures of them being... Uh, 3D built. printed or something? I think they're being built up here someplace. I Boy, tamper. Yeah, here. Here's... Here's a picture of the see it. Oh, I saw a, Evergreen. I saw Evergreen. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah you see it. Yeah, there, there, there it is. is. There it is. 95 angle. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I got all that stuff memorized. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Look at that. He uses them for axle retainers. Nice. Yep. And then, and I believe this is a tamper of some sort that he's building right here. Uh, yeah. Here's his two gen sets that he's got. So, Custom finishing metal kits. Oh, yeah. Metal. Yeah. Nice. I like metal kits, actually. Yeah. Use epoxy to put them together. Well, so, you use... so they have they have a pretty interesting. Uh, they they have also a very, I'd say, meager, nice looking local kind color. of, kind of eclectic almost. Uh, boxcar fleet. It's it's really nothing fancy. Um, wow. you see, uh, I mean it's. Accurail. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, right. <laughs> but there's nothing really fancy to it. But now check this out. This, this Caboose. is cool. This is cool. Oh. Look at that caboose. Now, that's what an that, international like clover or something. Yeah, that's that shield. That's that herald that's on the side that's of the real locomotive real. cab. Yeah. Wait, so engine makes those now, don't they? Those ICC cabooses. 
the I, well yeah i think these are more of i think this is an international kind of like the uh, ones that walters did or the walters ones yeah, so they yeah. Can use that caboose still it looks like it yeah sry yeah. uses their cabooses still yeah it looks like it this is pretty freshly painted but the and really on top of that to for anybody that really wants to check this place out there is a youtube presence so you can oh. go and see these guys including a little layout tour of ed david's ho scale canton railroad mm. there's a couple of videos there on them and there's some older yeah. school stuff sorry what's the name of that again uh, oh ed david's uh, it's the uh canton railroad ho scale i believe is the facebook group canton Railroad. i gotta check that out yeah so if if you know that's that's pretty much your short line of the show for i just i like this picture myself to be honest with you this one right here i kind of fell in love with this photo hmm. it, it's it kind of shows a little bit of everything they got going on <laughs> yeah. for power you know sw 1500s sw7s a little jeep 7u over here i mean who doesn't like that that's pretty so, cool yeah isn't it so uh yeah that is your uh short line of the show for this episode the can wow, railroad cool. yeah i love those cabooses that's the only time you really get to see them as mm. a short line you know functional caboose you know yeah now now <laughs> i am going to announce the next railroad I have already personally rail fanned this railroad with Bob Frischella. We are going to Massachusetts next, and we are going to go on the Grafton and Upton. The Grafton and Upton. A, a railroad that is a, right in, for all of you who might know him, right in Scotty Mason's wheelhouse. Yeah, he, he talks about huge, it on his podcast, he doesn't he? A huge Grafton and Upton guy. As a matter of fact, I may send him a message and say, "Hey, Scotty." <laughs> <laughs> guess and, and guess what? But that is what we're going to be doing. We're doing the Grafton and Upton next. So, uh, and I'm not deviating from that at all. I am like mm. stoked to do that railroad. Yeah, it's going to be cool. That's going to be a cool one too. Uh, as a matter of fact, Bob Frischella, just a real quick one. Bob and I got kicked off the property there. So, Atta boy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get kicked off. We got we got we got uh, uh, politely asked to not be where we were and never come back again. No, they didn't say that. We just mm. said you can't be here. You got to be over here. Oh, okay. So sorry. As <laughs> I'm like going click 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 click. <laughs> so yes. That's your short line of the show. Well, they sing their own railroad, I guess. Yeah, yeah, right. It's not like the CN cops here. There's only two in the whole sub district. <laughs> I told you that. Or you or was it last night I told you, Andy? Yeah. Like yeah, like, yeah, car, yeah. Yeah, my car <laughs> broke down right by the crossing. And right in the middle of the road. I couldn't get it out of uh out of like there was a train going by, right? So I put it in park, right? I'm right at the gate. Train goes by and I go to Put it into drive and the car won't go anywhere. Yeah. You can't move they can't move the car. It's locked out. It's a yeah. this fiat, right? Just oh man, I couldn't believe it. And I, I'm gonna get totally your man. It's it's dusk and it's a I'm on the bottom of this little hill and yeah. people are flying down there. I know, right? They're gonna <laughs> I'm gonna get, get you know rear-ended. Yeah. CN cop comes out of nowhere and puts his lights on. He was so awesome, a young guy, eh? Real talkative too. And we, we're chatting it up for about an hour and a half until the tow truck finally came and got me. But and he said, Oh, yeah, there's so he said, I said, What do you do when people are on the right of way, man? Like I was up at Squamish, they were on the bridge diving off into the Mamco River, they're walking the line and a lot of da. He says, Ah, nothing. He said, There's only two of us, can only be one place at one yeah. time. And uh, we don't police those areas, right? Or don't have the time to get there. And uh, you know, so <laughs> People walk the lines here all the time. Like I don't know if in like in Canada they're a little more lax, I think, or something. But well, we have. You know. I mean, some of the short lines around here you can get pretty close, but yeah, 
you know, yeah. you got to be really, that, really careful. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, Boober, I saw during the the short line segment, you went and grabbed a, a few items. Yeah. What, what, what were you doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I grabbed. I was going to just talk, you know, because uh, you know we we're talking about warehouses, right? And this is guess where this is from. This is only fourteen inches, so. Hmm. Right, it's that's from Glover uh, Road. That's from Glover yeah. Road, yeah. Yeah, like all the models just popped off with these, right? So this is like uh, seventeen inches by four inches by you know three inches deep. That's it. Yeah. Right. Like uh, you don't need a big building, and then here's an Acura rail car. There's the car. <laughs> And there you go. There's right, like your seat. Eight foot shelf layout. Yeah. Oh yeah, like, absolutely. Like, uh, like this was on Glover Ro Glover Road, right? Yeah. And it felt big, man. It was only eight feet, but man, did it ever feel big, right? But um, yeah. So that's just evergreen plastic. It's sixty thousand. There was no plywood there because it's a smaller one, right? Yeah. But you can see that's it. It's just plastic, and and there's a couple of doors and some paint. And I got this idea from a building. It was a fuchsia. It's like it's not pink, Ralph. Okay, it's fuchsia. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> no, because I know Ralph. If he's there, he's thinking, right? And then so, like, I painted it flesh. Like to me, a flesh. Yeah. And then light thin coats of white. Lots of white, like very very thin to tone it down. And then I added a little bit of red to the flesh, and masked off, and painted this line. And then this is a decal from uh, Microscale on a, a piece of plastic. Yeah, it's just a simple building, but, you know, it was one of my favorite uh, building structures off of uh, Glover Road, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I kind of miss old Glover Road there. Yeah. There was a question. On the wall. I was going to say, there's been some questions about Glover Road, if, if it's still around. and. Oh, yeah. Uh, like yeah. the flat. Okay, so it's only like two inches thick and there's nothing protruding on the bottom yeah. the switch machines that i made like they're you know they're manual switch machines for the turnouts mm -hmm. so they're up in up under two inches so they don't get bang, bump like like you can lay the whole slab like right on a table yeah it's just plywood frame with the door skin on it that's it hmm. really simple and uh and it's hanging on the wall in one of the rooms like i just put like two screws in the wall and it just hangs there because all the buildings just came off like nothing was glued on except the scenery right and the ties and a bit of low bush all the structures just came off huh. i don't glue them down so and they're all in bookshelves like this around the house so i could in theory take it to a show and set it up you know yeah you could like here look i'll grab one more one more uh, Oh, we got going on. Oh, this is the bridge. Remember this here? This is where it went to the end. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. This was at the end. And then beyond this was just a little two foot section where I could stage trains. Hmm. And they would come, they'd come through here, <laughs> uh, like onto the layout. And this is a facade of the Burrard Bridge. This is where I grew up as a kid. Yeah, the Dairy Queen. Oh, yeah, <laughs> the Dairy Queen. The abandoned. The, the abandoned. Could that, look at that picture. That's like the one. Where did he get that? For his for his uh, okay. icon. Okay. <laughs> okay, hold on. Now we're having fun. Oh here. boy, here. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's show and tell hour now here on yep. second section. <laughs> this is my favorite part. The, I know this is awesome. Peter, Peter, what what? How did you get the? How did you get that? Pick, okay, so it. this was a facade, yeah, a compressed, a little bit compressed, but it took the features of the Art Deco, like the Barry Bridge where I grew up. Yep. And as a kid, I used to play under here. There was a Y where they used to burn the old BC electric cars, like there was a burn track down there, and they would light the, those wooden cars on fire, burn them down so all the metal would fall, and they'd salvage all the metal. And BC Hydro was part was down there. There's a Y down there and a bridge over the Barry inlet there and this is where i used to hang out as a kid and that's what inspired this and i put it at the end of the layout and this facade is correct this is on the bridge and then these are lamp posts 
but now this it's all changed like this has uh anti-suicide fencing across the whole oh, God. Place, right? yeah uh -huh. in vancouver it's really changed a lot but anyway that was on one end and here okay check this okay so here it is the dq right remember that <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> right oh it's awesome from and then i even did the fluorescent lights you know underneath. yeah the fixtures and then i had an extra one that i put on the back alley on the diner remember you saw that leaning up against the yeah. oh yeah uh the trash bin yep right i remember seeing yeah, that well, yeah so i made a bunch of these because i always make extras right like whenever i scratch build out like component parts i always make like if i need three or four i make six hmm. or whatever just because some get trashed or don't turn out and you get extras yeah. and then yeah and then uh yeah, it was cool. But I never put like I never really finished. I didn't put window glazing in. No. But uh, this is from the '60s, right? Like that was a throwback when I grew up. It's like in my high school. There was one down the road where we used to go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The old Dairy Queen, the hangout. Yeah, the old Dairy Queen. We used to hang out there with our muscle cars, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, doing you know, right? I had a convertible back then too. It was fun. But um, oh, yeah, so I have all these models, right? They're all, uh, you know, just on shelves and stuff. Hmm. But uh, I was going to do a uh, up like a video just a revisit of Glover Road. I was thinking this year maybe, but but yeah, no. It's, uh, so uh, did we cover all the topics there, Andy? Yeah. So we, I know we talked about uh, the the big curves, um, and. We did we did some talk about the trees, um, but then there was the the colors we talked about right, the talk colors about the talk about right. muted colors, and then uh, simple prototype scenes, and I think we touched on that just a little bit. But uh, while we're while we're getting reset here, I do want to give a, a shout out to the section crew out in the yeah. chat. We got you know we're over two hours in carrying over a hundred. If you have questions. Um, you know, make sure that you, you get them into the chat. Um, I think there was one that came up that I wanted to address was, so if, if, if CA is, is the bane of the existence, um, what, what is your, what is your glue of choice, your go-to glue, uh, for styrene? Solvent, like Plastruct. And, uh, I was talking, okay, can you give me a minute? I just want to go run and grab the two bottles because I want to yeah. point something out. Okay. Yeah, certainly. Certainly, um, but yeah. I want to so ask, ask him about this stuff. I want to ask him about what he thinks of this. The flexophile. Yeah, I, I like know. this stuff. This stuff, I this is kind of my go-to solvent for plastic, you know, for styrene. I like this stuff a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's. I have a, I have a bottle of it as well. I also have the Plastruct. Um, I, I like the Plastruct a little more. And then, okay. yeah. So, yeah. so, Boomer, yeah. Okay, so Andy and Mike and I, we were talking about adhesives last night because we were going to talk about paint, like enamel, oil versus acrylic, and just like in terms of the, the modeler's health. Because yeah. I want to tell you a story. Like when I worked in the film industry, like I was working during a time where we were transitioning from oil enamels to latex and acrylic right like in the early yeah. 90s and the story that was going around actually it was true that people weren't collecting their retirement like long-term film industry technicians you know people like me and so on that built sets and painted they were dying of like emphysema and lung cancer and mm. like they weren't collecting their pensions <laughs> they had a big you know, you know the union had a huge pension fund because of that and people knew about it so they started to reform the practice and get rid of the toxic atmosphere out of the workspace right yeah and we need to think about that as modelers like like i'm 62 now right and i've been modeling my whole life and i started with enamels testers enamels and so on so acrylics weren't even out and even if there was a showing of acrylic they were fairly pitiful like they just didn't have any really good pigment quality to them and but that's all changed now, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm not really talking about oil, like tube oil paints. I'm talking about enamel paints and lacquers. Now, they are excellent paints, right? 
like it's kind of like the glue dilemma like let's close on this so i use plastruck for the for the said reasons it doesn't have a strong odor it's kind of like mech you know you were mentioning andy mech yeah right? yeah methyl ethyl ketone yeah yeah and, yeah and it will evaporate if you leave the lid off and you don't want to spill this either because you'll only spill it once yeah, <laughs> John. <laughs> and pray you don't spill this, because your wife will boot you out of the house, right? Or or whatever. If you're not married, you'll boot yourself out of the house, <laughs> right? Like this is awesome, hot, great glue. Like if you're gluing styrene plastic, like I build mostly ninety percent plastic, like injection yeah. molded plastic kits, scratch build. It all works together, right? Kit bash evergreen plastic i can weld it but i weld it all with this for good reason because my wife says i can still stay in the house <laughs> yeah right like this has a little bit of an order but it's not bad but it works really good but it works really fast yeah. right and it's a bit of a learning curve with it and it capillaries and you can just put parts yeah. together they hold them together and then just put a wick in it and it, and it basically grabs almost right away now this stuff here like if is really powerful this to me a thin it's called uh extra thin but i can't handle the smell man it's too strong I got, I it's, a, this stuff really does i have the same stuff yes this right. stuff is okay this stuff is like it works good yeah but oh my goodness you're not kidding about the way it stinks yeah I, no, it's, it's it's almost as bad as using straight mek I was it's, using it today. I had to have a, like I have a fan. I had to open the window, and my wife closes the door. She says, like she smells it in the living room. She says, no, she just close the door. Wow. And, yeah, and then I open the window. It's because I'm building a small model, and there's tiny little parts, and I can hold the part on, and just it's got a beautiful little brush, and you just go like that. Yeah. And then you let go and and leave it for an hour, and it's welded, right? Like, yeah. Sometimes it'll break off somewhere else. Like that's how good it is. But this is you, excellent here. Like, I have what do you think stuff. of this? What do you think of this stuff? Though? Well, that's similar to this. Flexifile. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah the flexifile. To, yeah, um, I don't know what the ingredients say, but um, like this methylene comes another, chloride. Yeah, I think this is a derivative of that too. But I can handle this. But you know, I don't know how anybody can model with this like for more <laughs> than a few hours and not feel sick. <laughs> Right. Yeah, they 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 sell this flexifile in a bottle like this. Yeah, it's you probably know. the same stuff as this, but you'll know by the smell is usually indicative yeah. of how powerful it is. But I like that one, and like it's a it's a necessary evil that the modeler has to be exposed to chemicals, right? And that's why I've gone all acrylic because I'll just harken back now with the film. So I was in film and we were going to latex, hmm. right? painting everything with latex and acrylic it's all that way now but you get the odd you know gringo you know he came in there with enamels and that was his kit and you had to live with it it was horrible because you're working you're building a set over here and he's painting oil paint spraying it's mixing oh it's crazy Ugh. but in your space your workspace what are you exposing yourself to if you're exposing yourself to lacquers in this like, don't be surprised if you don't get allergies and get sick down the road. Like I, like I have allergies now that I didn't have when I was in my fifties. Eh? Really? Like, yeah, oh yeah, like late forties, fifties, like to, to hobby stuff, like huh. like dust, like dust. I can't handle any dust anymore. Like, wow. Somebody mentioned about that too. But how do you keep dust off your layout? I vacuum all the time. Yeah. I vacuum almost every day of the floor, and I have a little brush on it with a connected you know to a little vacuum and i vacuum that like the layout is really hard like it's all matte medium soap so it's really tough right mm -hmm. it, like like it really is it's almost soft to move over but it's really tough so i can brush it and i can vacuum it like use a soft brush and vacuum and i vacuum it it's a smaller shelf layout i can do it probably the whole layout you know 10 or 15 minutes and i have to because my sinus i just get Oh, it's horrible. Like I get it at night, and then I got to deal with it at night because I modeled all day and I was exposed to this. This makes it worse. 
and uh, no, it is. It's it sucks, right? Yeah, I I used to work with uh, fiberglass and cellulose insulation when I was in the construction gig, and I never wore a mask and should have. And you know, it's it's I'm sensitive to dust now. It's You'll terrible. bounce back though, like your lungs bounce back when you're young. Yeah. When you get into your 60s, 70s, 80s, you start to really feel it. Like, I'm sure there's uh, older gentlemen uh, and women, probably too, maybe out there that know what I'm talking about. Like, you start to pay the price later in life. Like, modeling's fun, but there is a caveat to it if you're not health conscious. That's why I use mostly all acrylics now. Yeah. Humbrol paints are awesome. You're the greatest, you know. Yeah, I love the smell of lacquer in the morning. Humbrols <laughs> and an and like enamels and some of the, even the new lockers, like they're coming out with them again. They were getting rid of them. Yeah, and they're bringing and them yeah, back. And now they're all coming back. And now they're coming back because the manufacturers know the hobbyists. There's a certain movement in the hobby in the younger generation, mostly aircraft builders. They love lockers. Hmm. Aircraft model builders love lockers because they have, and I don't blame them because they have, because they have an awesome finish, like the scale of pigment. When you spray them thin, they, they look awesome. But I can do pretty much pull off anything I want now with flat to me a pigment and a clear coat hmm. of of either flat satin or gloss. And I'm not like I can wear a regular mask and to me and I have an open window and I'm getting close. I don't have a lot of overspray and I can and then big stuff. I take it outside in the summer, like I build up an inventory of bigger projects and I just wait till spring and, and paint them outside. Yeah, like this here, I painted outside this building. I didn't paint that in my uh, space. So going back to the glue comment, Tim Moran has yeah, a quick okay. question. Uh, do you like the plastruck to laminate? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, using this brush, though, to try to uh, – sometimes, you know, what I'll do is I'll glue one end, like, you know, two ends, and they'll just pry it apart. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just capillary, close, pry it apart, capillary, and just close it up like that. Like, do it incrementally mm. or if or uh, uh if i uh glue okay so here's where i use ca like this is where i'm a hypocrite <laughs> at least okay. you're honest about it right? at least you're honest <laughs> you know because i use medium ca like uh if i'm going to build a bigger warehouse like all my big warehouses as you know were built on baltic birch like i built the baltic birch substructure yeah and then i painted verithane water-based verithane it's like a mm. clear coat onto the plywood ca just goes nuts over that stuff like like you put one drop and a piece of plastic onto the verithane coated plywood and you're not getting it off really oh yeah there's something about the verithane that the ca just bites into right it's a mechanical bump and it melts into it or something so i verithane the wooden structure and then when i put the plastic on like the tilt up slabs for you know concrete warehouse stuff or whatever um, I just put a bunch of beads of medium CA and then I line it up and I drop that evergreen plastic 40 thou right onto the Verithane Baltic birch and it's never coming off. Mm. Like you'll never be able to get it off. Like you'll rip it, you, like uh, you'll destroy it. So it's on for good. And even if the wood moves, the Verithane shifts, right? It's a it's a layer, right? It it moves and the and the plastic moves with it. And I haven't had. Like I built models from 20, 30 years ago like that. And they're still solid. So the, that Verithane that you talk about, do you use the water base or the oil base yeah. version? Oh, sorry. I was looking at the question, Andy. What was yeah. that? Well, it, it, it's a, it's a three-parter that I'm going to, it's uh, so CV Railroad uh, Nature Scale says, hey, I'm building new bench work uh, the same as River Road. Uh, will water base Verithane help the humidity issues that I'm having? Uh, uh, say yes, hi to it Dusty. will. Yes, it will, uh, but uh, don't seal both sides, though. Like, just seal the top, right, like your plywood or whatever, yeah. to repel water when you put water-based paints and you spill isopropyl. Uh, it'll uh, uh, The verithane will suspend it off the wood so it can evaporate. But uh, you don't want to verithane, like, all the surfaces because you want the wood to breathe from the bottom, right? Because it mm. is going to move, right? Like, the benchwork will move. It's just a matter of minimizing uh, warpage and movement. Every model railroad will move. Yep. You know, there's no argument there. It's just how bad and where do you not want it to move is what you got to think about. 
and you don't want it moving where your seams are in your sections. Like I doubled up, like uh, I have almost two, like I laminated, oh yeah, so uh, three quarter, so three inch thick slab. So uh, uh, one and a half butt end, one and a half inch butt end with uh, probably one inch bolts or, or, or sorry, three eighths bolts holding the two sessions together. Yeah, right. Like, 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 like bulletproof. So when the track runs over top, it's not moving because that's where it's going to move, right? And it's going to yep. give you a bad day on your track. The rest, if it's floating a bit, uh, the worst you're going to end up with is four or five years down the road. Are you going to get a pinch in your rail somewhere? Because, uh, you know, this. Yep. Yeah. I haven't had any like uh, I haven't had any yet on uh, River Road. It's over two years. I haven't had any noticeable movement yet on it, which is impressive. Really? But I really, oh yeah. But I really like glued and Baltic birch and and cork with heavy weights, and then I varathaned it, and then I laid my track down. I used matte medium because matte medium isn't like uh, PVA glue. PVA glue is brittle, right? It cracks and breaks, right? Like it'll shear off. Like if you build, so like, but you're using matte medium to glue your track down. Oh yeah, I don't use PVA or pins or nothing. I just use like press pins to hold it down. I put my my like uh, I I actually use CA just to clamp it. Like you know how carpenters mm -hmm. use CA to for for clamping, right? Like mm -hmm. if you put a panel of wood, like if you're building a bar, let's say, like I built a few bars. And now you want to put like a walnut skin onto the, you yep. know, the birch ply or whatever to, for finish. You, you, you put all your PVA, your top grade PVA, and you put big blobs of CA and you push your panel against it. And the CA pulls the, the, the panel in tight, but who cares? Cause it's not going to hold it. It's yeah. the PVA. Like it clamps it. It's like a so clamp. I, yeah. yeah, it's a clamp. So I clamp my track when I lay my track on my cork. I use medium CA every, I don't know, five or six ties. And I just lay the track. I actually CA it along and line it up. And then when I balance it, I use diluted matte medium. And when the matte medium sets, it's good to go, man. And it's flexible. And if you ever want to move the track, all you do is pour isopropyl over top of it. Let it sit for like a minute. And the whole thing loosens, and you can shift the track, and when it dries, it hardens again, like like you never touched it. What? Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's I've some sort of for, dark uh, mystic art. I've been doing this for over thirty years is the reason why I do it. You know, when I was yeah. working for clients, like I learned all that, and I worked with people that were better than me, and they taught me a lot of that stuff. Like, you know, like certain products that were there. Like that's why I'm crazy about Matt Medium. Like it's not. You don't buy matte medium as a glue. It'd be too expensive, right? But you're only <laughs> using it in small volumes on a model railroad, and it's and it and it works wonderful with isopropyl alcohol. It mixes with paint. It mixes with water. Yeah. I mean, the stuff's just awesome, right? And then I'll soak a whole like my whole hillside scenery, like when it's all however I glue it down or whatever. I'll take a bottle with matte medium and I'll just soak it down, just soak it down, and it becomes like still sort of soft and pliable and i can rework it and reform it and shape it but it's solid yeah. it's not going anywhere and it's uv protected too <laughs> on top of that because map media by liquid texas has a uv rating in it does it really yeah it does my like bottle from led it. lights right yeah because led lights will burn out your layout color in 10 years eh? It'll, like 50 percent of the color riches will be gone right <laughs> and worse if you use craft paint right <laughs> <laughs> no, no, really, right? Like, there's a way to use uh, pro artist paint that's not super expensive. Obviously, it's more than craft paint. But um, that's it, Boomer. You were supposed to give all the secrets away. <laughs> no, we want to, to tell the kids, man, so they can be masters and <laughs> tell the and kids, <laughs> learn more than us, and build better model railroads, man. That's that's the way you do it, right? But um, no, I know he's just joking around. But yeah, so I use the gold. gold Okay, hashtag no sponsor golden. I use the golden acrylics for big areas because I can dilute it and it has a color fast double A rating. Me meaning just in layman's terms, I don't want to go into the technicality. It means that you can put lights on it for 20 years and the uh, 
reduction in the pigment vibrancy will be so minimal you'll hardly even notice if you do that same with crop rate, look at me i bought a dollar bottle ha 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 <laughs> that person might not notice if anybody else that visits it that day and comes back five years later will see the difference if they're attentive as an artist they'll say oh it's oh my goodness what happened it just fades away man because craft paint is garbage that's what it is but i know why people use it <laughs> no it is it's garbage right like i'm gonna call it what it is like if you want to use it use it go use it people use it you know right no go it's ahead. i'm not gonna do it why because i've been trained as a professional and was building for clients and would you want me if you paid me 20 grand or 30 grand for a layout for a shelf layout let's say would you want me to put craft paint on it is that all it would cost? No, but I mean, really, though. I mean, like if you commission me, like if, you know, like if you commission me, okay, can you build me the, uh, you know, whatever, right? Okay, section one, like just say like River Road. That's got the best paint possible you can ever put on it. Because if I ever did sell it or if the client that bought it, I would tell them everything. It's all documented. It's the best paint on the market. All best this, best that. And they feel good about their purchase. That was the practice that I did when I worked in museums and I and I built layouts for clients, right? That's what they got. And I'm not changing from that just because it's my layout. I'm not going to change from that. Yeah. If if uh if I, you're starting out, don't buy expensive paint. Like if you're in your early layouts, just just use whatever because the layout's going to be disposable. Even though you don't yeah. think it is, it will be yeah it, trust me it will because we've all done that we've all got the saws all out what you know when we never dreamed we would but there are people now i mean look at um some of the guys now with their layouts you know that are out there on youtube the shelf layouts, like they know that's a keeper yeah right i don't oh, even yeah. have to mention their names like they know who I'm, who you know i mean they know who they are and they know that they're not disposable those layouts and they put good good quality whatever electronics products you know whatever paints and they know yeah. yeah right um so i mean if you want to use craft paint go ahead use it right but i'll never use it and furthermore like here's another thing so take one bottle of craft paint from michael's that you bought for a dollar and i'll take my 20 dollar or 15 dollar golden paint and it'll go 10 times further than that paint when i thin it with water at least 10 times more space covered hmm. with more richer pigment like I have bottles of golden that when I mix it with water, oh, it's unbelievable. Like the mm. pigment uh, density and viscosity is this. Is what about this, like the the Liquitex wow. acrylics that you can get, you know, from the, you know, from your hobby Liquitex store? Liquitex is excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, is that on the same grade as gold? Yeah, it is pretty much. Yeah, the Liquitex and the golden are, are shoulder to shoulder. Like they're competitors, right? As yeah. a brand name product. I just use golden because I think golden when you're splitting hairs and talking semantics is has a wider range and a broader sure. reach and more artists like any artist will tell you like if you know an artist you ask about gold like they'll go yeah golden mm. right and they know right so yeah. like I still have golden bottles like this big you know that I used on on all of River Road so far with half the bottle left so yeah so i spent 20 bucks for the bottle look what i achieved with it <laughs> right you know postmodern model works he says boomer is set liquitex is great product it's fantastic <laughs> in fact that all my matte medium is uh liquitex professional <laughs> sorry that was the guy before that andy oh yeah green bay and western uh lines yeah. paul liquitex is uh in my opinion is the best matte medium on the market uh, I even tried the golden and it left this white kind of, it kind of bugged me. And I was really golden boy there for a while. And it was like, hey man, what's going on? I'm getting white kind of, you know, coagulation kind of in my ballast here. Like, and I sure enough was the gold. So I went to, so I tried Liquitex, didn't get that right. Yeah. So I went and bought a big, the big know, jug, right? Yeah. I buy the $50 bottles because they last ages, you know, and I just fill up the small ones. Yeah. But, uh, and like I say, like if you ever, okay, so when you're doing your turnouts, right? Like everyone's scared, you know, I don't want to put any ballast to points. I'm going to wreck it and seize my $30 turnout or 40. 
if you use Liquitex diluted mat medium 50 50 and be very careful with an eyedropper and like thin it even more like just 10 percent or 15 percent the next morning it, it might be stuck a bit but just move it gently with the little mm -hmm. tweezers and it'll just come loose and the ballast will stay there and you yep. can pick out the things you got a beautiful ballast to turn out you do that with pva oh you'll do it once <laughs> And then you're right. fixing a turnout. <laughs> and then you yeah. think, yeah, all yeah. Then you're buying a new work, turnout. <laughs> all my turnouts work flawlessly, man. Like they bang back. I don't even have, uh, I don't even have uh, switch machines on my turnouts or anything. It's the like I use a tie that's underneath the points. Like uh, it's the second one in, I think, and it's pushed up tight against the points, right? Yeah. Okay like tight enough that there's enough friction that when I throw the point over, it stays. And when yeah. I throw it the other way, it stays. I mean, I'll put machines in eventually, like, you know, like a remote ones, but I can operate and I just put my finger, I just push it. Somebody asked me about that. They, you know, they just, cause I, cause they're long, right? They're like number tens, they got a long, long points, right? And there's lots of leverage so they flex nice. Unless yeah. you hit wow. Yeah, so, you know, that's another thing I got to do. I got to decide whether I want to, because uh, the ones on Glover Road, I, like I scratch built those, uh, the switch machine throws, they turned out, I kind of fluked out with them. I got the geometry right by fluke or something. They really, I, I wish I made more. No, really, I wish I made more because they're flawless. They work with a little DPD switch, like in the arm. It throws yeah. the polarity. Yeah. But you know what? You don't need live frogs, really, like on a shelf layout. No, no, not really. Why? Both trucks are pickup powered, right? So long as it's just like I, I don't have them. River yeah, Road. I don't like either. I don't. All the, no. No, I don't. I don't power you my stall frogs at all. I don't. Yeah. I don't have mine are powered. Do you nope. stall stall in a turnout? Never. Yeah, and nope. if you got keep alive with, uh, you know, I mean, people are moving to DCC keep alive, right? They're yeah. ESU's building them in now. I, I bought a couple. Like when they came up, they they ran out fast. It, Aren't those it, those new uh, version fives have got that right? Yeah, the yeah. V5, the yeah. V5 decoders yeah. have it. Yeah, they got keep alive. So even if you have dirty track and a dead frog, you're like your, your locomotive's not stalling. But right. if you have a small roster and you have a few of those in there, then who needs dead rail? I don't have any real. Like I clean my track, I maintain and vacuum. Like I don't really have any stalling problems. Like uh, with my Atlas locomotives, I never have problems with it. Yeah. So that's just a, a funny one there from William. Yeah, the crow king would drive you bonkers. Yeah. yeah. But wouldn't you think <laughs> wouldn't you think that would be something you would find out firsthand from Thomas Gazier? Wouldn't you think that would be some one of the things that you'd find yeah. out about the croaking frogs? Yeah. That'll be the that'll be what Thomas has next to for a sound on his layout. He already right. has the loons. Yeah, yeah right. You know, he's already got loons now. So now he needs the croaking bullfrogs. I had power running frogs on uh, on the shelf layout Glover Road, and I had nothing but problems because I kept shorting because I would forget to throw it and I'd split the points. Hmm. And because the frog was live, it would you know the decoder <laughs> defaults and shuts down. Like ESU has a circuit protection in it, and I know it works because I've done it lots. Right, it doesn't fry the board. I haven't fried an ESU board yet, but uh, now on River Road, I'm I'm rethinking. You know, maybe I'm going to leave all my frogs you know dead because uh you know I don't yeah I, shorts. yeah that's what i mean we we roached uh uh soundtracks one that came in an <laughs> ather and you, you got hung up on the in. points and then you know you could just hear it frying and i'm like oh boy that oh, one's no. done yeah you, you let the blue smoke out yeah the magic yeah. smoke of the, <laughs> the magic smoke came, came out, out of it. that's the first one i've ever done too <laughs> I, it was. It just happened probably a month ago. Uh, my son. Well, what Henry, decoders do you use, Andy? Mostly in your local ones. You just, uh, I'm all you ESU. Or no? huh? What's that? I'm all ESU. Do you put them in yourself sometimes? Or? Yeah, I I take out the the uh, factory stuff and put all of my own stuff in. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit of a learning curve, but it's not that hard really. Once you do oh. one or one or no. two, it's, it's uh, like I did all mine. Actually, you no. Know, they're not all the issue. Uh, I have two TCS because I think TCS is pretty good too. Uh, I like like I've, hey, they have yeah. the best horn quills, bar none, like better than ESU, man. I, 
I used to like I used to like TCS. I used to like TCS a lot when I was an HO skill because a lot of times I only needed three functions. I only needed a beacon and a head and a forward and a backward headlight. I didn't need all these. I didn't need four, five, six functions, and the TCS decoders were far less expensive than the Digitrax ones were, and I thought their motor functions were better. So I, yeah. I've always well, ESU is the best with motor yeah, functions. like they're oh like they yeah. Know that uh, tip, there's a tip on YouTube. You know, it automatically sets everything. Like it's, uh, I linked it on one of my videos. It's a ways back, but it's on. If you go on YouTube. Like you set the uh, like on your cap control, you set I don't know it's anyway I can't can't recall it right now, but there's a YouTube out there. It's a lot of views, and you just press a button like one I think F one, and it runs down the track and stops, and it's it it sets up everything. You don't have to program nothing. It runs like silk, man. Hmm, I mean, you've yeah. seen my locomotives, right? Like my Switcher MP15. Oh and, yeah. Uh, that, like. I never run it on the single digit steps because it's so slow you can't tell. So I do a jump like uh, six or ten or something like that, like each step, like notch. Like I have yeah. the notch set. Like I have uh, eight notches in each one. Like I only go maybe notch three or four, and that thing is just I've like I've ran that from one end of the layout to the other, and I think it took an hour and a half. Like yeah. it ran it's like so slow like in like 13 feet hmm. just creeped so there was there was a question um and and it, this is kind of tying in uh i think it was austin clunker uh <laughs> have a drink oh god no <laughs> in a hotel right no <laughs> yeah right little mini bottle there he was asking and i think a few other people have asked this in the stream and i was kind of saving it till the end here so what was your what has been your favorite model build? Oops. <laughs> uh, my favorite model build. Yeah. Uh, what what uh okay, so my favorite scratch build on River Road. Yeah, let's let's do uh we'll do a, a locomotive, uh your favorite locomotive build, and then uh let's do a scratch build on on the river on River Road. Okay, the MP15, uh which I had here. Uh, I can grab it if you want. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, okay, hold on. Yeah, this has been so. This has been uh, quite a, a a fantastic show. Uh, we're still we're getting close to the the three hour mark here, and and we'll be shutting it down shortly. Um, but I do want to uh, send a, a a message out to the folks in the chat. Thank you again for the support. And if you have any questions. Um, please get them into the chat so we can get them out in front of Boomer and the crew here uh, tonight. So, boy, it's chaos on my desk here. Okay, that's because so, you got ha- that's because you got half a Glover Road sitting there. That's yeah, I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's... Okay, so I have two. Like, uh, I have a modest roster. Well, like I only have about I don't know fifteen locomotives or something, twelve or fifteen or something. Half of them are not even painted. They're all undecks mostly, but but I have two favorite locomotives, okay? Yeah. And I have a sampling of everything other than, like, I don't have a scale train. So we talked last night. Yeah. And yeah. it's, like, don't get me wrong. I'm not, you know. <laughs> just scale trains scale is not trains. the craft they're, paint they're of awesome. locomotives. <laughs> okay, they're awesome locomotives. I know they are, yeah. but I, I don't need another locomotive. And unless they want to send me one for free and I'll do a review, okay. <laughs> okay, scale trains, and yeah. I'll pump you, man. <laughs> like, no problem. But I don't have one because I have enough right now. And, yeah. uh, like, I have Atherin Genesis that I don't even run, right? I was sponsored with a few by a few of them, but I don't run them. I run my Atlas, and this is my favorite one right here. This is uh, Atlas MP15. Is that in focus? Yeah. Yeah. It's, let me get you up on the big. Yeah. The big. Okay. So yep. this, I bought this with the, you know, the cheesy uh, sound DCC that they had, the gold, the Atlas Gold, Andy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Remember what were they called? MSI or, or QSI? Or QSI. Yeah. So, so I. Th- tore it out and threw it in the garbage 
right yep. away. It took, yeah, the, <laughs> that's where it should go. That's yeah. exactly where it belongs. That's where it belongs. And, uh, <laughs> this has the ugly Amtrak. Uh, I had to get an MP, uh, MP15 Alice. I couldn't find any like this. And I wanted one for uh, River Road because SRY has several of these. I think they have, mm. well, they have two running right now, but I think they had four. And the original from BC Hydro, like all their locomotives, apart from the Jeep 9s, are all original equipment from when I was a kid. I remember them in BC oh, Hydro. Wow. Oh, yeah, they've all been rebuilt. And then they added GP 9s from Montana Rail Link, right? Because the guy that owns this railroad owns Montana railing. But anyway, so this had the ugly silver Amtrak paint job. Okay. And in the pickle jar, 99% isopropyl, that went, man. I stripped yep. that paint off, right? And so I stripped it down and I redid all this. There's, there's two sugar cube speakers in this, an ESU decoder. Uh, I installed uh, new lights. LEDs, the soft gold kind that mm -hmm. I got from Tom's Model Works. Tom, plug for Tom's Model Works. There you go. There you go. Yeah, he's a great guy to deal with, man. If you ever want to get like niche stuff and LEDs, and he's service is second to one. Like he's a class act, that guy. And he's got a neat YouTube channel too. And he's he's actually manufacturing a Jeep Nine of his own. Did you know that? Tom's Model Works. Uh, the Jeep Nine R. Uh, he's commissioned Motown models. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Motown models. Mo yeah. Motown models. Sorry, not yeah. Tom's model works, but his name is Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Mo yeah. Thank Mo you, Andy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, he's got it. Like he's had it in the makings for a couple of years now. Yeah. But it got you know, when the big C happened, things slowed down, right? But anyway, yeah. so anyway, yeah. So I got the LEDs from him, and they're beautiful wires. They're the like they're not the the you know the the acrylic covered ones. They actually have a skin on them, and they're mm. super tiny, right? And they're red and black for idiots yeah. like me, right? And so I so I built the ditch light bezels. I put ditch lights because, like you notice, right? Uh, all the SRY uh, equipment is main road stuff, so they have to have ditch lights. So, and then I used Tamiya, and then a clear coat, like a flat coat, on this. And yeah. I did some. I like I didn't weather it that much because their equipment's not like that. No, like their like their equipment is impeccably clean. Right, they they, yeah. they have a lot of pride in their roster uh, S R Y. So this thing will run through two lines in the sand. Like, <laughs> no, really, it will. This, this thing will run on any dirty track. Like if I run this, like this thing runs on that Code Forty section, like yeah, bumpy and weedy, and yeah, this, this goes right through. But if mm. I my Jeep Nine won't, and this won't either. But this C N Jeep Forty Two is another Atlas. Yes, I love my mm. Atlas. Um, this, uh, locomotive, where's the best way to show that? Uh, mm. this one I redid as well. Totally. And this has four sugar cube speakers. I built my own, uh, speaker box. Yeah. And I put in four ESU speakers. I took the fans out. So it just booms like the turbocharger. Like this is my best sounding locomotive. I don't always run with sound. I sometimes you get tired of the sound, but once in a while, in a boring day, if I'm bummed out from a hard day, I'll fire the sound up. And this thing, when it fires up the turbo charge in these EMDs, oh, this, and when they wind down, when they notch down, oh, they sound awesome. Yeah. Right, Mike? Hey, Mike? Oh, my God. Yeah. Don't you love this locomotive, Mike? Don't you love Oh, Sierra? yeah. I know you Those do. Those are so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Don't, anyway. That's such a anyway, cool so they use engine. these around here too, right? Like just down the road, uh, for switching out the lumber and the industries. Uh, like I've run across them too. I haven't got that much video, I'd like to get more video of them, but mm. uh, this is a really nice runner too. Um, it's not of the same running as this one for some reason. And you can see I did the sanding pipes on it too. I mean, I'm out of brass. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, the oh. sanding pipes. And uh, put uh, so just one single light at the back. No, uh, no ditchers here, but I put ditch lights on the front mm. on the anti climber there, and uh, and the dual uh, LEDs in the nose. I really yeah. like these comfort cab uh, units. Eh, they're really Canadian. I like you see them all the time, right? I know some people aren't big fans of them, but I sure like them. Huh. Anyway. Yeah. 
Yeah, and they're all ESU, right? Like I put ESU, like I have, you know, I collected a few ESU, like the newer ones, because I got other locomotives I want to do. And I, I'm, I want all ESU. I want just compatibility. When I MU uh, with the power cab, it's so easy to do. And all ESU you don't have any problems. I just, I just MU them and, and they work. Yeah, right. And I delete them out of the consist and they delete. Yeah. And I take command of one and it moves. The other one goes. And yeah. I, you know, like I can't make them work with my TCS. Like the lights go funny on one unit. And, uh, just, and then I got the programmer, right? You have the programmer, Andy, the ESU. Uh, yep. Yeah. The yeah. ESU look programmer. That's Isn't the way that to go. awesome? It has a steep learning curve. But the stuff you could do with that is unbelievable, right? Like you yeah. could, uh, the, the nice thing about ESU is you can program any locomotive into it. Yeah. Like any sound file. Like yep. you can't do that with TCS. Like they're, they're hardwired to, you know, EMD and, and GM, you know, and GE and right. It's just, yeah. Do you, so question in from uh, Dwight Northern, Dwight at Northern Star says, do you use JMRI? No, I don't, but I heard it's pretty good though. But I, another learning curve. Oh, I wish I had the time. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, there's so many things that I know people, you know, they talk about that are great out there, but man, when your plate's already full and you're, and it works for mm -hmm. you, like, like the locomotives for me, like we talked about this too, I think like they work, right. And they do mm -hmm. exactly what I want them to do. It's like, you know, the, uh, you know, the, what's that called? I don't even know the name of it. You know, the, the cab thing, the proto throttle, the proto throttle, right? Yeah. Yeah. So some people have mentioned, oh man, you should get the proto throttle, man. You, it'll elevate your, you know, well, really, will it? I mean, I'm already elevated about the model railroad. I don't need a proto, like another throttle to make me be passionate about it. Yeah. I think they're great, but I don't want another link in the chain. Like I don't need a proto throttle to, like I can do everything with my power cap and my ESU. Yeah. Right. I can notch up and down. I can uh idle i could coast i could not I could, like i could do it all like i know how to do it like with a couple presses of the button so and if i want to go notch one i just hit one button that's it notch there you one. Go. and then i hit f shift f10 the brakes come off and it's slowly right like it's all in there like it's just yeah i really like what is it the drive hold feature that or, or oh the, the drive hold yeah yeah that's my one and of the my brakes favorites. too right like the yeah. You know the dynamics and the or, or sorry not just the dynamics the cab brakes like you know mm -hmm. and like it's fun work too. it's fun because uh so i my son he's six years old and he's he's starting to operate and uh he's using we have digitracks here uh for a command station and yeah. uh he's he's using those functions he loves the drive hold he loves revving the engine way yeah. up yeah and then neat. letting the brake yeah. off but then he's also, it's almost like a game for him now where he tries to use the buttons instead of the dial to, to get the train to do what it's supposed to do. Yeah. And he's six and he's, wow. you know, he's figuring yeah, that stuff good. out. So it's just, it's fantastic. And he's using a Digitrax uh, command? Yeah. Like yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Digitrax is pretty good too. Eh? Like I had two sets like way back. Mm -hmm. Like I had two systems. Uh, yeah. I sold them both eventually because I was not involved in a well i mean i did some club like activity way back at the old cn station in vancouver i was working on that layout there's a i don't know if you knew that but at the cn mm. station in vancouver bc there was a huge layout a club layout up above in that building yeah it's gone now because the lease ran out and i worked on the narrow gauge sub on that that was that's another story but everyone had did like when digitize came in they put digitize in it because it's a great club layout like yep. a, a system right like it's designed for that, right? So there's nothing wrong with digital tracks, but I use an, uh, NCE, right? Because it's like it's idiot proof. It's, yeah, it's pretty. It's easy to stand up and it's very yep. reliable. I sent know? one out, you know, to New York, and the guy was the service was second to none. Like the guy phoned yeah. me and, hey man, what's going on, man? How's the railroad? You know, he's just, yeah. you know, oh yeah, no problem. Yeah, I said there's nothing wrong with this one. You must have sent the wrong one. <laughs> I said, does it say software update one two? Yeah. Oh no, I sent the wrong. Right. You, you know? sent the you sent yeah, the good one yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah no. I did. Yeah, yeah. What oh, an idiot! No. Yeah, what an idiot I was. I don't know what I was thinking there. Right. Had it all huh. thought through and sent the wrong one. 
we, we ended up talking for half an hour like yeah. on the phone just you know how's the weather how's new york and you know, i'm on the west oh yeah and told him how much i loved his, his his cap controls and the one i had like survived a fire really loved, oh yeah i loaned it to a buddy at a bench fire this guy oh. had this huge like did i tell you this like this guy i know he has this huge end scale layout right in his garage yeah like a, like, uh, like a double garage and he's just obsessed with end scale he's an end scale like junkie all the way anyway he loves cn the guy's got man he's got a lot of money invested so anyway he left his soldering iron like, like he's got a workbench below it's the most dangerous and it's all tool shelf the around the, yeah and it's all shelf around the whole you know yeah. like goes like 20 feet and then 12 20 right and it's these huge yards right that are just full of loaded with every kind of box car like massive yard he has so the guy like lays his soldering iron down on the bench under the layout and forgets to unplug it oh no and he goes to yeah so he goes to bed right and in the other like it's sort of a triple car garage he's got two muscle cars like uh, mm -mm. On, like like 1970 uh, cuda with you know <laughs> he's mopar not too right the guy goes to bed and he smells smoke right <laughs> See smoke coming out of his garage, runs in there, grabs buckets of water. So he had a bench fire, superheated gas bench fire are phenomena. Like they're weird, eh? So it's burning along the bottom of the bench, like smoldering, like all this plastic and debris, this red glow, right? And the superheated gas went like a river up over the yard and melted like a river, like weaving through. Like some cars were in perfect condition. But then where the superheated gas was like a snake and it melted the he showed me the car seat and went over there they're like locomotives melted into puddles of plastic and then cars that were like you know like four or five inches away perfect oh my gosh yeah so he had some smoke damage and some heat damage but it didn't burn down but yeah the whole like the weird like the other like fires are really bizarre eh? like i have a nephew he's a fireman now and he tells me sto stories like oh yeah fire's fire. crazy yeah, like gases and the way they move. Anyway, it went over his whole layout and and had its way like a snake of heat, like a heat snake going through and melting buildings and Ugh. locomotives. And so half his stock was written off, right? Scale model disaster of the Left first the order. Iron on, like plug. Yeah, in. yeah. That's always if we can impart one safety tip uh, out of this show. Always check to make sure your soldering iron is yeah unplugged and cool before yeah. you leave it unattended don't go That's make your sure. coffee or have lunch and leave it on yeah but uh yeah no yeah it's just yeah the yeah the stories eh? like uh, <laughs> i don't know where we segued off of there with, uh, uh is there any more questions out there that uh yeah so let's I'll, I'll do a little admin bit here we'll we'll give uh we'll give some time for some more questions and then uh we'll we'll end up tying down for tonight yeah, but yeah, for sure. um let, let's just uh the 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 couple things i do want to touch on um this is uh uh been a, a fantastic show if you enjoy what's going on make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to our channel that's one of the ways that you can support the second section is just by subscribing and and, and giving like. us a like yeah give them a like yeah. yeah give them give us a like tonight um that's it's been a like i said tremendous amount of information coming from boomer and and uh, you know Mike as well with the short line. So thank you guys uh, for for that as well. Um, and then of course there's always the uh, um, the Facebook page. If you want to get in touch with us, we're out there on Second Section Podcast out on Facebook. Uh, just answer the questions. We'll let you into the group. We got a great community out there um, showing some great models, sharing a lot of techniques, um, and it's it's a fun fun group of folks out there that are really enthusiastic about the, the hobby of model railroading. So come check us out there um, and we'll, we'll, we'll get back to it. So it doesn't look like uh, we have too many uh, questions out there, um, but we are going to have maybe a little closing commentary uh, before we, we shut down for tonight. So Mike, I'm going to, I'm going to kick the microphone over to you for just a little bit. Um, I always, I always find it fun to kind of put you on the, on the, uh, spot 
and uh and and, and what did you, you think do this it? to me every show you every do this show to me. every but before that you know what let's let's ask let's ask so sue the milwaukee road he says is boomer a cliche canadian hockey fan and if so which team does he follow well, I'm not a Vancouver fan right now, man. If you've heard the news there, buddy. No. You know, they're blowing the team up right now. Are they? Uh, yeah. And when we lost yeah. the Stanley Cup to Boston, when they had the ride, I, uh, I, mean, I left a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> you know, when they rioted here, that was really bad. But, oh, yeah, I grew up in hockey like any Canadian. We're nuts about it. But I haven't really been since the big C, you know, thing back there. I Since then, I kind of lost a little bit of interest. But I do follow on the radio. And... Uh, to listen to the local team here, the Vancouver Canucks, and uh, you know, they—it's kind of like being. I don't it, think it, we're going to see a cup in my lifetime. Like I really don't. I've lost. Like, yeah, it is yeah, a train it's wreck. a train wreck. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. The team it, is for sure. But you know uh, what? I think they have to do it. I think they have to rip the team down and just rebuild the whole thing. Now, I'm a Minnesota Wild. Do. I'm a Minnesota Wild fan, so I yeah. can feel it. You know, at least they're trying. Yeah. You know, but you're not a Ranger fan, eh? Oh fan. no, <laughs> no, yeah. or a Red Wings or a Blackhawks. Uh, see, uh, no way. See, I'm on the southern, the southeastern side of Wisconsin, so we don't have a hockey team. So I, I have to default to the Chicago Blackhawks. So. No, oh, you geez, do man. not. <laughs> you do not. Yeah, we used to hate those guys when they came out here, man. Oh, yeah. The rivalry was Black awesome. Box. Chicago yeah. and Vancouver was an awesome rivalry, right? Yeah. But you know the Oilers. I was a big Oilers fan, of course, in the eighties, right? No, oh, right. You know, you know, before the cap, right? <laughs> you know, you could build a goon team and the best players and Go dominate blue. the league for five years. You know. Yes, yeah, Saint Saint Louis is kind. Of, I like the. Yeah, I like Saint the Louis. Saint Louis. Jeez, Nothing's they're... wrong with Saint Louis. Is a good team. They're all right. Yeah, but they've been slumbering lately or something i don't know see i was a north stars fan growing up and i swore i'd never watch hockey again until minnesota got a pro team and and because well, yeah. after they left for dallas because my heart got ripped out but you know man it was just so i've been a wild fan ever since then so california is hurting right now you know their teams anaheim uh san jose and la they're like yeah, they're kind of on the skids right now but He'll um, bounce back. You know, a couple of good draft picks, a couple of good trades. You never know, right? <laughs> yeah. I feel sorry for Connor McDavid, though. Did you hear he just – did he break another record yesterday? What does he got? Like, he got 50 goals in 60 games or something? Like, he's oh. going to uh, – they say he's going to be the first NHL hockey player to win three major awards. Like, in one season. Really? Like this, yeah, like this year. The Hart, the – the uh, what are the other ones? I can't remember but right now. But, yeah, he's – I feel bad for him because they can't seem to, you know, he can't buy a cup, you know. Mm -hmm. No, they got the no. best player. They, yeah, I don't know. It's weird, but. <laughs> so, yeah. Mike, what? So, so, what? What? What are your thoughts here on the show this evening? Um, yeah. We've had Boomer on twice now. My um, head hurts. <laughs> what? What? Uh, <laughs> My head hurts. What are you gonna? Have, what are you gonna do now? You, I saw you feverishly taking notes over there this evening. I have been taking copious notes. I got notes <laughs> all over the place. I have, wow, I have notes that I've got hours, them sitting yeah. right here. I, I will say this much. The next time I go into the yeah. layout room, I am going to be, uh, I am going to be taking a long, hard look at the way I have my tracks set up. Mm. I'm going to take a look at my curves. Hmm. And and last night I swore to God there was no way I was gonna mess with any of the track because I didn't want to lay track again. Thanks, Boomer. Now I'm gonna be laying track again. Well, it's all hand laid anyway, isn't it? It's all hand laid. Yeah. yeah so no I got a deal to pull it up. You can reuse it just like the real yeah. railroad. Oh sure, yeah. <laughs> just like just, the real rail. Just like the real real railroad. I have a whole bunch of scrap ties and everything else like that floating around. It's it'll be. It's going to be interesting because there were a lot of really good design element things discussed today for layouts. Yeah. And and if there was if if we've had one show over the last year or so, this this one tonight really threw out a lot of really 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 good tips as to yes. how to how to configure your layout and not not just your shelf layout but you could actually just your your traditional 
built layouts also you know they, they just uh a lot of food for thought tonight and um yeah lots of fun yeah uh, yeah a lot of a lot of great great information and that's uh you know i, I put on here model railroading is a disease that's on yep, there that's a um, sound bite that's a that's a sound bite yeah that's a team too <laughs> i also have uh i have pains this is from my notes from last night i have pains gray sitting here yeah uh uh oh, yeah. that the uh Mr. Surfacer, I've uh, Mr. Surfacer. We didn't talk about that, MR but I mean, hobby. MR Hobby. Yep, I've got that on here. Um, it, it's just uh, yeah, somebody test was the talking on your paint for sure. Try it, try different paints and find what you like. Yep, and yeah. and it's just uh, great, great topics again. It, as always, Boomer. Man, I tell you what. You're kind of the gift that keeps on giving, buddy. Yeah, it, no, it does, there is no. I'm having fun, right? So just ring me out. Yeah, just ring me out like a wet towel while I'm still good or, or still happening. And then when I go under, you know, right? Yeah. I yeah. got lucky with. Uh, I got lucky. Like I'll just say this in closing. Like with section one, uh, I'll admit, like on River Road with the track plan, I got lucky. Uh, you know, I worked hard at it, but I think it was the first the, the first section that I've ever done that I'm 100% uh, content with the track layout. Like I'll never dream of pulling it up because it's to me it's perfect. It's the section two that uh, I'm starting to uh, rest a bit and wrestle with. I'll I'll make it work, but I don't want to push it. Right? If I force it, then I'll end up having to go back. Right. Are, are you but, thinking that you're finding is, is your is your stall kind of are you are you finding having a hard time making the flow work of the what you want the scene to do is that kind of what you're well, trying you know to what, it's a, you know it's a good question i'm glad you asked and i'll tell you okay a couple reasons okay number one is i don't want to rush and finish it because i'm loving the process so much and i'm i'm actually a little bit scared that i'll finish it too quick sure i know that sounds weird but like i don't want to you know hurry up and get there like I really don't because I think when you relax with the layout and you think it through and sleep on it and just you know move around like maybe move away from that work on something else like in scenery river like actually this summer I want to do more model building on it like I want to finish the bar stuff I want to build that tug like it's all related to river road but I want to do more model construction now right I've done scenery for a year now right pretty T time to move to something a little different right yeah i want to yeah. like and so there you go like that's the beauty again with the model railroad okay i've done scenery for a while i want to take a break and i'm going to you know like i have some locomotives like i have my uh dash nine that i want to do like like this here right i forgot to show this oh right. yeah 46 nope. 45 local net right the only uh dash nine in this roster and cn that had local net right hmm. like with like like with bc rail and so that's on the go and i'm kit bashing the whole cab like it's a special cab do you know that mm -mm. no oh, mm -hmm. oh yeah this cab here was unique man with the teardrop window see that oh yeah yeah yep. dash nine it's a special cab only like castle shops put out resin cabs for this but I don't want to do resin. I want to do injection molds. So I'm using evergreen pots. So I already did all this. So, and I covered it. It's older video, but I, but I'm going to build this and then just show some segments of what I had to do to get to it. And I'm changing the, everything on it. Like I'm making a prototype, a prototypical build on that one from a Kato. Really? Yeah. From a Kato. Yeah. Oh, that's and, gonna uh, be nice. That's kind of on the back burner, and I haven't been able to touch it, so I'm frustrated. I haven't been able like people have said, Hey man, when are you gonna build some locomotives or kit bash or paint? So I want to try to do a few projects this summer uh, related to the roster, and then I have some other SRY units that I want to build, and mm. I want to get an SD35 too. Like <laughs> here we go, right, Andy? Yeah, I said, no, 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 I, I got I got one I can sell you. <laughs> Real cheap. I have an un <laughs> I have a I have an undecorated SD thirty five. Yeah, I do. Yeah, hold 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 Is on. It an undeck? 
uh, used, well, I painted mine, but Mike has one that's an on deck. Do you have an SD35HO, Mike? Yeah, I think I want to buy it off you, but, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Here is in a complete, literally a complete Atlas SD35 that I started a project on, and I just put it in this box, and I took it out of the box. Never been run. Is that the undeck one? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. And it's the one that's uh, like the deluxe one, right, with all the – Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah, we'll yeah. have to talk talk about that, Mike. Doing deals here. Yeah. Doing deals here on the second section. Is it all there, like all the body parts, Mike, and the chassis? I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm not sure what's here. What's okay, not. well, you have a look at that down, like sometime there and bear me in mind, and we'll talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, email, touch base, email. <clears throat> you bet. But anyway, yeah, so I want to – so I'm paused a little bit there, thinking it through with the parking lot and moving forward. And uh, I need to sheet that corner this this summer too. Baltic Birch. I've been waiting for the price to come down. Oh man, the price! Like for a five by five, five by five, oh. three eighths Baltic Birch is ninety dollars. Isn't that crazy? Right. Yeah, it's it unbelievable. Is. But I and... only need one more sheet. So. <laughs> Sort of. And then, yeah. So, I mean, I want to do some uh, model related stuff. Like, you know, I got the ferry and the tug. I'd love to scratch build that, mm. like a water line, like a water yeah. line tug. Because it'll really make the barge scene come alive, right? Yeah. That's what I meant when, you know, when you said, oh, really? You're going back to section one? I said, yeah, there's, there's, there's stuff that I've, you know, put on hold there uh that i want to revisit so i'll have to review what i'm going to do for content this year and where i'm going to do it on the layout and, yeah uh, but right now i'm really happy where everything's at like i really am i'm this is the first layout that i'm pretty much 100 percent happy with like i'm not really disappointed in anything like i even if i have things where i would have done a bit differently it's okay like i don't have to do them right yeah so this has been this has been on a journey for about a year and a half now, right? Since you yep. started construction. Yeah, on River Road, yeah. On River bunch. Road, and you're what, about 12, 12, 13 feet down the line of what you've yeah. got? Yeah. yeah, well, well, to the end of the parking lot is yeah. four, 14 feet. Yeah, that's so it's a big parking lot with nothing there. Okay. Yeah. Uh to the grassy knoll, it's like about 13 feet. Yeah, it's wow. fantastic. And it's it's amazing because it's just every every video that you share with us, you come back and you have this just amazing enthusiasm for it. And you know, it, it's it really is showing that shelf layout, you know, can you know for a year and a half just you can just fall right into it and and fall down the rabbit hole and, and really really enjoy it. Yeah, it is. Hobby. You have that going too, Andy. I can yeah. see that, you know, like, and Mike too. I haven't seen what Mike's been doing, but, but you know, the building's nice. So he's on the path too, right? right. And if you're feeling good about it, it doesn't have to be big. And I don't want to put the wrong message here. Big layouts are great. Trust me. But even if I had the money and the time, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't do it because I don't have the, uh, like, I don't have the fortitude to pull off a big layout, like at my age now, anyway. You know, I don't, yeah. I'd rather focus in and pour it into here like this, right. And keep it safe and nice and comfortable. And I'm feeling really good about it. And, uh, so, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, don't, like, don't change it if it's good. No, <laughs> yeah. Keep riding, keep riding the train. Yeah. Keep riding the train. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. Having fun. And I'm glad you guys are too. So, yeah, it's, it's been a, it's been a fun ride, that's for sure. Just this little bit that we have behind me here. I've been working on it every day. Yeah, it's looking great, too. It's really starting to come alive slowly. Like, every time I watch the show, I start looking around for stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, what's changed? Okay, has he got the same cars? Nope. He's got a new consist on there. Oh, he's got some backdrop work there. Now, what's that there? The color of the foreground, the crossing. Yep. What's the pacer? Is that a pacer going across? Uh, yeah, how about yeah. that idiot that parked on the tracks? Yeah, yeah, that look at that, eh? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that little guy. Don't worry about that little guy. He's yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah, he's racing across. Yeah. yeah, he's 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 doing what he can. Yeah, some no, interesting I... guests coming up too, like Paul Kassar. 
Yeah. Uh, he's a, a nice guy too. Yeah. I've, I've, uh, you know, talked to him like, you know, like on the, on the channel and stuff, you know, he was a big, big proponent of, uh, pushing my channel like over a year or two ago. Paul was, you know, really good about yeah, that on Facebook. Like he gave me a lot of traction on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, he's a he's a fantastic, uh, I guess, ambassador to the hobby. Yeah, you know, he is. and and you know, he he was, uh, in truth be told, uh, second section got our you know start, you know, because of him propelling us, you know, as well, and and yeah. really and really getting us, you know, uh, some some exposure. So yeah, it's a uh, it's yeah, he's really a good ambassador for the hobby. Yeah, yeah, that's for he's sure. Great. So yeah. All right, so it sounds like uh, we're winding down here. Um, yeah, no more questions sure. about hockey or anything like that. I do want to thank uh, Boomer. Is there anybody Fake. on still? Have they all come? We got eighty. Back? We got eighty-five. Uh, oh, really? We got eighty-five in. people in there. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I just want to know that because I don't see the. Uh, I don't have the message board up. Is yeah. there any more questions? Because uh, I think I've pretty much exhausted uh, what we were going to talk about. Uh, yeah, our topics. So we can, we'll throw yeah, out throw out some quite a bit of ground, but yeah. I think we can throw it. Uh, if there's any other questions here, just get them in quick uh, before we tie down tonight. But yeah. again, I want to thank the section crew for hanging in there in the chat tonight. Great questions, great banter. Um, I appreciate, you know, I know Mike and I both appreciate the support that you guys give us. Definitely. And then, and then uh, Boomer again, thank you for, for joining us here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you too. For having taking, me taking the time. So um, if, if, there's there's already been requests for you to come on on the next show tips on water yeah for sure yeah yeah so um if if you'll if you'll have us back uh, we'd love to have you back on sometime down the line oh um, yeah for so, sure this summer yeah we'll do one yeah, this summer sure. and then um and live then, yeah. from vancouver live from vancouver yeah. Sometime in July or August or something. Yeah, so very good. I'm going to, I'm going to Sudbury in April. March, April, May, June, July. Yeah, well, it's up to you, Andy. Yeah, I'm we'll, open. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. That's for I sure. I like cooking up with you guys anyway, so I'm yeah. I'm open <laughs> anytime, you guys. Anytime. You got it. Yeah, anytime. Just let me know, uh, like you do, and I'd be happy to join you and be a guest on your show. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's been and and yeah, it's it's fun and I enjoy the the conversation because three and a half hours tonight went by like fifteen yeah. minutes. It really fast. We you know we had a couple cups of coffee. I'm sure we could go for another two hours or so. I'm sure. Yeah. So, well, yeah. 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 I but wanted anyways. to talk about water, but uh, that's coming up anyway. Like I've got some projects on the go, some smaller ones on the side. So there'll be some interesting content coming down yeah. the road too on that and uh, that's another like that alone could be a three-hour show i think yeah you know, that just, would be just talk, just talking about using acrylics and creating creeks and rivers and you know bodies of water with nice safe water-based hot like they have some stuff now some new stuff that just came out that i have now mm. this this brilliant layer on for water oh it's just i like like i did the creek at the culvert a little bit i showed it yeah uh, on the cottonwood blind, like you'll see it, the camera goes by. Like if you get a chance to watch it tomorrow, like you see, I put a bit on there, and it just made it pop. You know, hmm. yeah. So yeah. anyway, well, Very there's good. a burning. There's the burning question. The last question of the night from Ralph. Where's Dusty? Yeah, I know. I can't find her. She ditched out. Like <laughs> she was here earlier, right? Like you know, yeah, she was, started, she was up on the desk, and she knew what was going on, and uh, she disappeared. Uh, hold on one second. We'll get we'll give Dusty a, an appearance here before tonight, and then we'll we'll have Dusty do the sign off for us here. Um, so yeah, I think that would be great to have Boomer back. There up. she is. There we go. There. There's Dusty. Oh, oh there yeah. you go. All right, and I think that I think Dusty's going to take us out tonight. So, so good night, everyone. Thanks again from the second section. And we'll yep. thank see you, you very next much. Time. Yeah, thank she's a bit grumpy. I woke her up. She doesn't like to be woken up. No, <laughs> but I can get away with just about anything with her for a, for a time, for a spell. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, so the two, yeah, the two women in my life, right? Yeah. <laughs> wife, right. And Dusty, Wendy and Dusty. <laughs> All right. So okay, great, you guys. It was a lot of fun, and uh, 
really, really enjoy getting hooking up with you guys and being a part of the community there. And I hope I, yeah. you know, like I hope I can continue to inspire and to share and educate and to really encourage those people too that are on the fence or maybe struggling a bit. Like just dive in, man. Just dive, dive in, in and make all there the you go. Dive in and have fun. And don't worry about making mistakes. I make them all the time. Still do <laughs> and still will. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Yeah. Night.